Hey, we got numbers. Hey, we got numbers. Welcome to episode number 479 of the Cleveland Moto Podcast. Light them up, boys. Oh, damn. That one got me in my face. Literally, I'm wearing that. I, I'm li- I'm so wearing that. The, not, the fridge, not in the eye. Not the fridge the is eye. frozen, Tom. The fridge is. The fridge is. Yeah, this, this cider actually is not it's drinkable right now. Frozen. It's actually fucking frozen. <laughs> yep. My beverage is frozen. I cannot drink it. Oh, it's a slushy. It is. It, it, in oh, 10 minutes, it might well, Dan, be a slushy. Dan, you're going to have to fix this then. Oh, my What'd goodness. What did you bring, Dan? <laughs> Fortunately, Dan brought a liquor. The finest whiskey with a screw cap for $12. And it, it better have a cock on it. <laughs> Fighting cock. It does. Yay. And for that, oh, I will shit. get a glass and some ice. Oh, shit. Dan, tell him about ah. fighting cock. <laughs> I don't know much about it. Uh, a <laughs> buddy of mine discovered it, and for 12 bucks, <laughs> it's kind of hard to go wrong. Right. Smell that. It does not smell tasty. Tom also has. Tom it does has not also smell. It, of opening up his beverage. All I ever do now is smell booze, and that does not we'll smell right appealing. Yeah, yeah, there's wow. something very not smelling. That, that, really good. that reminds me of drinking my dad's Seagram's. <laughs> Seagram's Seven. <laughs> yeah, Seagram's Seven. I remember. Oh. In the, the was it the plastic? But no, that's oh, Kashakta. Yeah. Is there yeah, Kashakta? Yeah, I don't know, but. It was cringe. Man, we lost half the cast. We started, and now there's booze okay. being distributed. Oh, no, brown liquor cast. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> hand me your cock. All right. It's a oh, very firm. It's a very firm cock. That's a brown cock. It is a very firm brown cock. Uh, Sean should be here for this. I know. I've, All this cocking and handing out of cocks, and so Sean's not we here. made that turn. Ooh, that is a generous pour. Okay, well, it's going to be that kind of a night. So Tom's Tom's beer exploded because it was frozen's. Cider. My cider. My uh. My my beverage is just frozen. It didn't explode and get anybody soaking wet. To my immediate left, Dan Kropke. Thanks for the cock. And to his immediate left, Steve Sleepy. It looks like decisions are being made. Decisions are being made. Yeah. <laughs> to his left, Johnny Mac. And to his left, Chris Smith. And behind the bar, cleaning up in aisle two, <laughs> Tom Bennington. Oh yeah, that I went need, everywhere, I man. Need a bar nap. I think it was funny that you tried to carry that. You tried to carry that desperately to the trash can, oh, yeah. and it just distributed itself <laughs> everywhere. Um, so today, I found something that was the sordid deal of the month by far, and I bought one for myself. And after I bought one for myself, I went. You know who would like this? My friends. <laughs> so I bought a bunch of them. Yeah. Yay. And I, uh, they, it came from Aldi. My favorite store. It is. My favorite podcasts have free and, things. Uh, so I have the, uh, I have the, <laughs> Holy the Santa shit. Christmas sack <laughs> for everybody. Wow. You got dicks and sacks and we all got, things. We, and got, we got fighting yeah, cock and a sack of oh, goods. That's for you, Chris. All right. Uh, this is for you, John. What? Yep. There you go. Oh, so sweet. What is this? It's bees. For you, Tom. <laughs> I like it. And what does it do? Hold on, you're gonna, you're about to find out. Uh, let, oh. Don't steal the thunder. There okay. You go, thank sleepy. you. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Wow. This is the build up. There you go. It's again. heavy. It has weight to it. One for Sean, and I got one for Pete. I'm opening mine. Up. Is that like the plural for ferrets? It is. It's, if you have more than one ferret, you have ferrix. Wow, this is all right. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Some of you guys can open up if you want to. Okay, the bit that's the, already interesting. You can open up the... Uh, the so here's the deal, boys. While they're making the a- ASMR sounds of the packages opening in the background. <laughs> so Aldi had these in, uh, in their Isle of Shame. I love the Isle of Shame. Dude. I know. I have I have learned the Isle of Shame. It is, it it is a true find, yep. right? It really is a true oh, find. Fuck yeah! And I was uh, doing my normal, like my my, you know, every three nights I do an Aldi run. And what I when I saw saw this thing, I was like, that seems ultra handy. So what it is, it's a little tiny, you know, hex bit driver. That's what it sounds like. And but on the ass, on the butt of it, it's got a high intensity LED light. So, you know, you got a light, but it's got a light for the driver, too. So the front end is being lit, but you can use the back end as well. But my second favorite thing is that the handle rotates so you can have it in the pistol grip configuration or you can press the blue button on top and then you can rotate the shaft. Oh, no way. And make it into a screwdriver one so you can get into harder to access places. Right. But here's what kills me about this thing. 
is it comes with like 60 freaking bits. Yeah, yeah. It, like I real mean, bits. I you, buy like I buy these things a lot. You know what goes even harder than that? Uh, Three year warranty. Yeah, well, it's Aldi. Come on. <laughs> Three year warranty. Right, yeah. hey, Three year warranty, man. man. I've had all right, I've had this for two years, eleven months. Take it back to Aldi, and they have the twice as nice guarantee at Aldi. So if you don't like it, they'll give you double your money back. Think of all of the steaks you can buy. Think of that. So I got one for the shop because my one that I've had, the, the the thing that I have that does this job that I've had for the past 12 years. It seems like it's got a lot of torque. It's got a lot of torque is, and it is, has a clutch. This is going to be Becky's new favorite thing because so, she always gets on me about how she can't find a well, drill or ooh, screwdriver. It was funny. House. I was working on, on many bikes today yes, you and, were. Um, and halfway through it, I was actually videoing some of it. And I was like, you know, this is the time where it'd be really nice to have a powered screwdriver. I'm not even kidding. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I use them a lot because I'm prepping the bikes to the shop, oh, putting yeah, a lot yeah. of things together. And the low speed without the impact helps you keep, like when you're putting screws mm-hmm. in yep. plastic, because oh, yeah. you used to have that Milwaukee oh, yeah. one, with, all, and I'd put a real long Phillips screwdriver attachment in it. Oh, yeah. And for shucking plastic off a bike, it was oh, absolutely. super I've, fast. I ripped, the job I ripped through a Kimco the other day that would have taken me days. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, that's my go-to. That's on my little cart that I have, you know, in the shop. I have one of those that I've had now for a very long time, and it's just suffering the signs of age, a rechargeable device, really. Getting 15 years out of any rechargeable device is well yep. done. But this was, and it, I'm so happy with it. So I did field test it. It works brilliantly. And if you lift the, be careful when you lift the tray out. But this is my favorite thing is, if you lift the tray out, you'll find there's a wall wart and this thing doesn't use some hokey finoki charging plug. It actually uses a USB-C. Yeah. So you can charge it with shit you already have. It has gotten... Oh, excellent. That's is, always the downfall of, like, the, the, yeah. the oh, yeah. cheaper things. Yeah, it's like... Is that, do they have some stupid so it fucking... charges char- on a it is, 3 16th plug or something. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, though. Is and you US, lose it and you're right. fucked. USB has gotten right. so cheap and ubiquitous yeah. that now... And it's yeah. easier to steal your data that way. It so. is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And I did check that the wall wart that it comes with... Is uh is actually a spicy wall wart. So if you want to charge your phone up, nice. It's a it's a good one for charging your phone right fast in a hurry. So that's cool. So that's our that was our uh those are our podcast presents today. That's Yay. awesome. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, super fun. Thanks. Yeah, it's good stuff. So we I thank again, you. Really appreciate. It. And by the time this drops, you can try your local Aldi. But if you're in the Cleveland area, fuck you. I bought them out. I had to go four different Aldis. <laughs> so. Today I went to three oh, different Aldis. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! And I uh, oh, I snagged you. the ones at my uh, by the one by my store too because they didn't get. I think each store maybe only got like eight of them. Sure. Right. Well, well thanks guys. Good night. I'm gonna head home. You're gonna head home. You got, you got your presents. Shut up. Out of here. You got some shit to build. Ta-da, ta-da. <laughs> I got. Toys. Where, where was this when I rebuilt, remodeled like six house <laughs> kitchens? Right. The How the kitchens would be the one, right? Yeah, the kitchens oh. would be the one for days. This is what Peggy needs, though. She was trying to use my like. She's like, no, I'm gonna. I was I was diligently working on remodeling a bathroom at the other house. She's like, I'm gonna take down those shelves in the other room. Do you have, you know, I'm like, oh, well, grab that, that up my other drill driver and you mm-hmm. can use that. And I just hear, fuck, it, it won't go. It's like slipping. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's too spicy yeah. for Real what spicy. you're doing. As yeah. soon as you try it, like the screw runs away from you because it spins it so fast. This would have been perfect. This for isn't it. spicy at all. This is perfect. Yeah. And I had the, like, I had the little, little tiny Ryobi shooter, like the four volt Ryobi shooter. Yeah. It didn't survive. And uh, this is better than that, so I'm pretty happy with that. Who wants to hear a little listener mail? Uh, I do, I do. Uh, from, from our Patreon supporter, Ryan Hegdahl. And when I start reading you this, you're going to remember who he is. Yeah, I already know. Yeah. 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 All, right. All right. So, gentlemen, I'm back in my rightful place with great news. I'm having a boy. Hey. All right. I, think, I bet you it's going to be cesarean, because I don't think you can fit it out of the front hole. I was going to say, in. yeah. Right. Um, we have decided on the name Killian. Why not? Killian. Killian, Killy Freyer, and he is due on New Year's Eve. Nice. With that being said, I will be taking the year off from racing, except for the Urban Cross race we have every other year. In Urban Cross, we basically shut down an entire fairgrounds and race around the entire grounds, in and out of the buildings, and a little bit on the motocross track. It's basically a combination of motocross, hair scrambles, and enduro racing. It is one of the best events out here in Iowa. In other news, I am sad to say I have passed my locked up BSA 
on to my brother and trade for a running 82 GL 1100 Interstate. Yeah, that it still has the Honda cases in good condition. So I will finally have a running street bike for the first time in two years. Go fast and take chances, boys. I'm grateful for how much <laughs> easier you make my days at work. Forgive the bouncing around. I have ADHD or whatever that is. Take care, gentlemen. I know nothing about that. <laughs> ADHD is right. And he, he didn't write ADHD. He wrote 80. HD, yeah. like 80 Harley Davidson. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty cool. Thank you, Ryan. Very cool message. Love hearing from you. That I'm, is, that I'm is really rad. interested in this race thing. Like through buildings and stuff. That, that sounds, sounds fucking, fucking cool, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's some Ken Block on a budget shit right there, man. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Um, what, are we, what are you doing? But well, we're doing it at the fairgrounds. Well, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Can't, can't threaten me with a good time. So I just thought I wanted to read that one right quick and hurry and get this off to a, a rollicking good start. Uh, been a very funny week at the shop. Normally this time of September, we're starting to slow way down. Apparently not though. Apparently there's been a wild hair up somebody's ass in the city of Cleveland to get bikes in for service. And I'm thanking them for it. Good. But Tom's dance card has been super full. Oh, lately. Yeah. Also another thing that I'd like to remind the folks on, I know it's September teetering on October. Oh. And I know that you feel like you have your shit together. And at this point, you're the world's greatest motorcycle rider. We've seen a disturbing number of crashed bikes come in this this week. We've had a disturbing number of crashed bikes come in this week. The weather has not been bad. Again. It's been a little dry. There's been, yeah, it's exact. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. God forbid there's been too much fucking traction, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. The normal rain and things that we've had at this time of the year that would keep the driving a little bit, you know, settled down a little bit. I don't know. We've had people come in. The one guy came in with road rash from his pinky fingers to the far side of his elbows on both hands. He did straight up Superman, chin involved, the oh, whole yeah. deal. Ouchie. How did the gear look? Yeah, right. I'm <laughs> sorry. Who, well, what were you saying? Well, the t-shirt the gear? had a couple, no, t-shirt sorry, had a couple holes in it. Sorry, sleeve. It was an automatic. <laughs> All still perfect because he wasn't wearing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure it looks great in his closet, right? Right. But he was doing like the whole like, hey, look at me. I'm just out having a good time. And if you listen to our show, you know my shop sells a vast majority oh, yeah, of motor we have, scooters. We have every jacket for every size you could ever possibly oh, yeah, imagine. We do. Please. And yeah. they're all good quality. Come in and buy some jackets. Nothing I sell doesn't have armor in it. Yep. So here's the thing. You got to wear it. Uh, he didn't wear it. And he was doing the whole, hey, it's a nice day. I was out enjoying the sunshine and whipping around and. The next thing I know, he was whipping around. <laughs> well, I think what happened is I I think uh, he, what he says is that a car ended up in his lane. Yeah. So a car coming the other way who wasn't paying attention, probably texting, mm-hmm. ended up left mm-hmm. of center at him. And then he panicked, went right as far right as he could go and ran out of road. Yep. Bounced off of the bounced off the curb on the right hand side. Bike went down. He went down. And he got, whoa, man, if Road Rash, if Road Rash was an award, mm. he had it. Dude, that shit's painful. It oh, is. Yeah. And the tracks on his forearms were like three and a half, four inches wide. Oh. So he spent some time on the ground. Yep. And so we now have three bikes that came in. Bam, bam, bam. Like within four days, five days, just coming in for crash, crash damage, crash damage, crash damage. And they're all, every single one of them is bike Versus car. Yep. Mm, yeah. And that's that's been the thing. There was a video somebody posted earlier today. Uh, the guy with the birds, Sean. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. R. yeah, he posted one about a guy that you know he he the guy was in his on his cruiser. Traffic comes to a stop. Mm-hmm. Car behind the guy comes to a stop. Right. Car behind the car doesn't doesn't stop. Pushes the car into him, and it's mm. just you know. And what's, you know, this is why lane split. It was a whole thing about lane splitting and, and, yeah. and filtering. And I don't care how and, good you are. And the comments, the comments, of course, were all, well, the biker, you know, split lane splitting is bad but, you know, and filtering and blah, blah. But, but nobody mentioned what the actual thing is that you should do. You don't have to lane split. Just don't park behind a car. Park sideways. So yeah. if you get rear-ended, you oh, go yeah. past the car. That's my... Yeah, that's my go-to. Yeah, I, I love that. But that's If, if that's I'm also, stopped in traffic, I am going to be in a position behind the car in front oh, of me yeah. where if I get punted... I'm going to go in the gap between the two cars. In front of me. I'm not going to the back is, of that dude. This is a no. lot of experience. This is a, all of us who have ridden for decades. Well, and a lot of a lot of new guys don't know. Hey, don't park there. 
<laughs> and you can't check your mirrors for the car that's no. hitting the car behind you. Yep. There's, yeah. But I'll tell you, but I'll tell you what, though, man. It's the world's biggest blind spot. When I commute exactly. to work, and I do, like, if you're on 224 and I do get it on a red light, mm-hmm. when you're at the red light, I literally do look in the rearview mirror. Oh, absolutely. Until there's about four cars stacked up behind me, because at that point, I figure four cars, if the fifth car hits the fourth one, there's probably well, not a chance it's going to come all the way forward. The thing know. that kills me the most, and I can't, I can't stand, when, I, when a customer's bike comes in, this is the thing, my biggest pet peeve, and I'm not going to lie, it is literally one of my biggest pet peeves. Why the fuck don't you have mirrors on your bike? It's not what the cool, fuck? Man. What in the fuck happened to your mirrors? Why are there no mirrors on the bike? I cannot test ride a bike without a fucking mirror on it. Yeah, the mirrors on bikes are important. Drives me nuts. Yeah. This, those stupid cafe racer ones too, the little tiny disc mirrors yeah. that you can't see shit out of. I hate those, but at least they're mirrors. They're mirrors. But you know one of the things they tell you is you're not supposed to put your bike in neutral. That, oh, yeah. that way, like you, if you saw something coming, you could actually be like, "Oh shit!" Rah, rah. I'm a, I'm weirdly divided on that one. Yeah. Uh, I do put, I do always. My bike is always in neutral moment of light. It's just part of it is like, well, you know, clutch is out, bike's resting. Some of the bikes too, when you're in gear, like you're pulling the clutch. There's a drag on the motor. Yeah. Um, just because you're pulling the clutch in, there I mean, is I'm, a drag on the motor. I'm, I'm typically, I mean, we're, we're typically diagnosing garbage. So you yeah. gotta figure out why the thing's moving. So a lot yeah. of times neutral is important. <laughs> yeah. And I do. I am a guy that definitely puts it in. I usually will coast. It's funny. It's cause I'll coast up to the light kind of in neutral because then you never know if the light goes green, I can pop second or first, depending on the situations. But I, I do a neutral thing. I do. I don't like sitting in the light. I think it's also because I remember one time when I wasn't, paying so much attention and i was on a bike and i was on a harley in fact and i put the bike i was sitting at the light clutch in in first gear and something happened that i had to jerk my hand off the handlebar real quick for something and i i thought it was in neutral and it wasn't and it was so fucking embarrassing when i hit the car in front of me (laughs) because i just I yoinked my hand off the handlebar and I was just like, my brain was like, oh, it's in neutral. It's always in neutral, but it wasn't. It was in first. Yeah. And I let my hand off the grip and I felt like a grade A rube for having a 1.7 mile an hour collision (laughs) with a car in front of me, which didn't damage their car, thankfully, because I hit them from, you know, two and a half feet away. But it bumped them and it bumped them and the bike went down on its left hand side and I had to pick that up, which is, you know. You're trying to explain the situation while the guy's getting out of the car and he's angry at you for hitting his car. And right. you're like, oh, okay, you know, my 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 bad. Mm. So I do I do a neutral. I, I definitely put it in neutral. See, I, lo- I never put it in neutral. At really? All, unless it's a really, really long Really night. long light. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll usually leave it in, in gear until yeah. I'm stopped. Yeah. And then, like, after, a, if the light doesn't change in, like, yeah. 20 seconds, then yeah. I'll put it in neutral and I sit there. Yeah. But, but I like having the ability to go, like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, like, see That's ya. true. It always just depends on how bad the clutch is. Yeah, <laughs> true, absolutely. Yeah. There is that. Right? Yeah. yeah. If, if it's like a Harley, I'd have like, to reach down with my hand and oh, find yeah. neutral because that ain't happening. If it's, the fucking if it's, like, a, if it's like an 850 <laughs> T3, like if it's an old Goosey <laughs> clutch. So, they're so bad, dude. Look, the brand new one. The brand new Harley that we all got to ride. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> What the hell did what? they have? Did they have the Clitoris Corporation design neutral on that bike? Because it's unfindable. Well, you know what? Right. With your other one that I'm riding, I think what we got to do is invest in the bat, like the dual, the yeah. thing with the like. Because it used to have the thing with right. the it heel shifter, right? It was heel toe. That's easy to fix, it, and it yeah. needs it because right. like there, you can't. I've yeah. stretched my calf muscle and got a cramp <laughs> trying to pull that fucker. <laughs> I am a big fan of heel toe. Yeah. I am a huge fan of heel toe on a cruiser bike. Yeah. I like heel toe. I'm very I'm very used to it. Yeah. I like it. Well, and, call and, me, you know, old man, but I'll I like it. And it gives you a little bit of finesse. Like, it does. Like you're you're yeah. much stronger pushing your heel down yeah. than you are lifting oh, your toe yeah. up, man. Absolutely. And the Harley, like every other bike Especially. I have, it's like probably like one newton meter of energy needed right. to shift gears. Right. The Harley's like sixty. Well, <laughs> and it's a seven and a half inch throw. Yeah. Right. So you're like, oh, okay, got to shift this one from the hip. Yeah. yeah. You do. It's so bad. I've never had to lift my foot to shift. Like you're. Well, thinking, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, honestly. <laughs> Because you can Old, be in, new, it doesn't yeah, matter. You can They're, be in fourth gear and leave the light. They work the same way. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't. They haven't finessed that out. No, no, they got that. That one is. Well, that one is alive and well. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. I uh, just just wanted to bring that up. Just thought that was fun. Hey, before I forget, you handed me this. I handed you a letter. So this is awesome because one of the dudes at Mid Ohio we hung out with the entire weekend and who fit right in and like 
like some guys come and are cool and some guys find a role and step right into it and then just own that for the weekend. And that's what fireman Mike did. So mm-hmm. he yep. sent us a little letter and a sticker. Oh, uh, that guy's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm stoked. And that's cool. Cause I was, I was wondering what happened to fireman Mike. He was awesome. So I'm going to reach out to him and make sure we keep in contact with Mike. He did, oh, he did, do you want to read the letter to our, he says, yeah. well, it's kind of personal. No, I'm kidding. He says, hey, buddy, here's <laughs> that, a sticker from the department's drone alone. program. <laughs> Thanks for letting uh, me and my sister. Oh, yeah, and his sister was awesome, too. Yeah. Forgot about her for a second. Hang hey, on. they went to Porco. That's true. Like, they did the full thing. Oh, they yeah. got the length and breadth of that shit. Yep, he said he botched trying to get with us when he was in Ohio because he got a bunch of stuff going on. I asked Pete about it. Uh, they all had fun free beer all weekend at VMD and talked a bit about uh, fire departments and programs. I know you have put a lot of time and effort into the drone program. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mike. That was awesome. And we like Mike. I hope you come back next year with your sister. He was awesome. Yep. Bring. Then we put him to work on Thursday at the shop too. That was pretty cool. I was like, like, Oh, since you're here, would you like to prep a couple of TNT one thirty fives? As I put him and I put uh, uh, J- uh, Jake two point oh, yep. yeah, put them both Which I right to work. Love Jake too. Hey man, Fireman Mike great. though had the best mustache. Yeah, he had, he had the best fireman mustache That's, I've ever it's seen. It's required. Yeah, yeah. It yeah he had the Hercule Poirot. He was very with, perfectly with artisanally great, crafted. With great mustache comes great responsibility. Like he's one of the few guys that you know, if you got a mustache wax, he'd probably use it. Like you yeah, know, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's fucking cool. Yep. So since we started out just talking about fucking Harleys, right? Yeah. Oops. Feel bad for you. I, so I went down a deep dive. I was looking up a recall. And I, so you look up a recall and you're like, OK, I looked up a Harley recall because that Harley that we recently had, the, the low rider that we all enjoyed. I was like, "Ooh, there's there's a recall on that bike. Right. OK. Recall on the bike. Check. Not a big deal. We can deal with it. Okay. It turns out that, um, oops, the back suspension on a Harley Davidson comes in a couple of different flavors, but if it's a soft tail, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. The suspension's hiding under the vehicle. And if it's adjustable, there's a remote reservoir that has a little valve on it that you can adjust to make the ride softer or harder as you see fit or based on the size of your backseat passenger. Right. Comment on your own as you will. However, mm, they've been having a strange problem. One of the fasteners that is used to hold that remote reservoir in its location has been fucking off. Hmm. Now, usually when something falls off a Harley Davidson, eh, the world doesn't get too upset, right? (laughs) We consult the accessories department. We buy another one with an eagle on it. We put it on and we are better for it, Mm -hmm. right? But in this particular instance, the remote reservoir for the rear suspension does happen to fall off. And because it is hooked with a high pressure hose to the rear suspension, it falls off directly into your back tire. Oh, that's not good. Which does act as a wheel chalk. Mm -hmm. And at 70 miles an hour, a wheel chalk in front of your back tire can be emotional especially when the wheel chalk is held to the motorcycle by a high pressure hose which means the wheel chalk can't even have the courtesy to fuck off and leave you alone <laughs> after you hit it one time right and now no. this, and now this is a call back to the road rash conversation <laughs> <laughs> and there's few things in the world i want to lose less than the contact patch at the back of my motorcycle as my motorcycle tries to perpetually drive over what is essentially a billet ass hard metal beer can that is strapped to my motorcycle via a high pressure hose that it can't break. So it's not like driving over an beer can. It is like driving over all the beer cans, but these beer cans don't crush. They just make you hop down the road. Feeling kind of like that might be an important thing. I sure hope it's not affecting too many of these motorcycles. (laughs) 65,224 motorcycles. I'll say that again. 65,224 fucking motorcycles. That's a lot lot of motorcycles. So if you have a Harley Davidson, and many of our podcast listeners do, Steve Noble, that is from this era, 
2018 to write me out. And if it says the word soft tail anywhere on it, so if it has, you know, F, X, L, or F, L in the name, you got to check your shit because, and I think it's funny that they put Steve Noble's bike on the description picture. Yeah, right. That's pretty great, isn't it? That is his exact motorcycle. Uh, but yeah, this is a, this is a NHTSA campaign and this is a big deal. And the repair for it is not terrible. They're changing the hardware. It's a drill out. And basically replacing something that was probably a bolt and a well nut. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's probably you, a bolt. And you a well basically nut. use a hose clamp on the old bikes for the for remote reservoirs. Yeah. Well, this one yeah. had just a. There weren't enough skulls on it. A, you know, a tenement clip, basically a tenement clip that a bolt went through. And they're replacing that with a grade eight piece of hardware, nut yeah. and bolt assembly that, you know, and, and it's probably some red Loctite, too, I hope. Yeah. Um, but that's the deal. Kind of a big deal. If you'd like to look it up, it's a uh, recall number 0181. <clears throat> And I went, recall number 0181. Well, in poor man's English, that's 181. I wonder what recall number 180 is. And I just started looking up Harley Davidson recalls oh, wow. by their recall number. Wow. And uh, it turns out that's a really interesting hole that you can go down. And then I started comparing them to other motorcycles. Would you, would anyone like to guess in the past 10 years... How many Harley Davidsons are in 10 years? So 2014 until right now, how many Harley Davidsons have had individual recalls? Not how many bikes themselves, how many recalls have there been? Hmm. Meaning stop the presses, get those back, right? In 10 years. Now, to put it in perspective, I would like to remind you that arguably the worst car I've ever owned in my life, the Fiat. <laughs> The Fiat 500 has also been out for 10 years. Fiat has had quite a few recalls. Fiat has had 18 recalls. How many recalls has Harley Davidson had in that 10 years? Would anyone like to guess? I mean, I'm going to say at least 50. Anyone else? <laughs> 114. Oh, shit. Wow. 114 individual recalls over a 10 year span. Now, granted, Fiat only had like five or six different versions of a car they could sell yeah, you. They yeah, they do this across yeah. their whole fleet. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, no, that's a yes, it's across their whole fleet because as we just found out, one recall can cover 65,000 motorcycles. True. Damn. But even if you took that number and divided it by the number of motorcycles Harley sold, it's still going to be more than 18. It's a lot. Man, there's going to be a lot. lot of people busy at the Power Sports Network at the auction for all those bikes. <sighs> <laughs> you know. Okay, only 40,000 are at that's, auction. I mean, that's a real sensitivity. That's a real sensitive thing. Because when I did pull up Fiat numbers, and I just wanted to see, because some of the Fiat issues that my car had affected as many as 1,300 cars. It's a very small number, mm -hmm. right? It's a very small number. When Harley-Davidson is affecting 65,000 bikes, that's having an impact on a lot of people, a lot of human beings. And a Fiat, when the badge falls off a Fiat, and they call it a recall, you're not really putting anybody in danger, right? So I decided that I, I wanted to get rid of all the, the badge falling off at recalls, the things that aren't really important. So I took their their main list, over 100 things, 114, 115 recalls, and I just did a word search for the word crash. Okay, because with it, with NHTSA, they have to talk about things that can result in a crash. It was 103. Oh. So of their recalls, 103 of their recalls involve the word crash. That's a little different than your wiper stopping working on your Fiat, which is a recall, by the way. So I wanted for the hell of it to pull up a small smattering of these just because it's a little fucking terrifying when you look at them. Uh, for the folks at home, you're just going to have to suffer through us reading through a couple of them. December 8th, 2023. Motorcycle is difficult to control at high speeds. Engine and engine cooling structure. Units affected, 1,464. These are street glides. Does anybody know anybody that ever bought a street glide? Yeah, they're all at my shop right now, <laughs> right? Street glide is a very popular motorcycle. Yes, it is, in fact, a, a problem 
that the motorcycle may react unexpectedly and become difficult to control when traveling at certain high speeds on rough roads or through wind gusts. Dealers will update the engine control module software free of charge. What's going on with that? Because it says it doesn't specify what the problem is. It just says, go to your dealer. And the term loses control at high speeds is terrifying. But the fact that they're telling you they're going to update the ECM and yep. instead of doing anything else is kind of suspicious. It also tells me, yeah, that what they're probably going to do is say, oh, you were going 116. We're going to make it stop at 113. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Tom. That, you're, that making it be the ECM is. Yeah. Because I, I mean, because I did update it. Or beam. maybe the ECU or the ECM is allowing it to get too hot and it's losing its coolant again. That's a little ambiguous because there isn't it's a campaign number. Yeah. So we can look that up. A motorcycle is difficult to control and can increase the, the risk of a crash. Yeah. Ouch. How about a brake fluid leak? Yeah. That's a thing. Now, uh, mind you, this isn't far apart. These two recalls are less than 60 days away from each this, other. This, on their, this is on their brand, brand new bike, too, isn't it? Though? Yeah. Well, this one is. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, that's as weird as it sounds. You never buy the first year. We're rec- <laughs> no, not not in this one. This one's been around for a while. Oh, OK. OK. So this one's been around. It affects 2200 bikes. Um, yeah. Brake fluid. The rear brake line may not be secured properly, allowing it to chafe against the exhaust pipe, which can result in a brake fluid leak. OK. Affects 2200 bikes. Ouch. That's kind of an interesting thing. How about a fuel leak in the presence of an ignition source, which can, which can increase the risk of a fire? Ouch. That's that's a tough one. And these are on the 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 X three fifties. That that's kind of weird. Uh, very very strange stuff. The uh, this is the shock absorber fastener sixty five thousand. The uh, just a straight up on the the. Tall rear shocks were sold as a HD parts and accessory for bikes that had a low profile rear suspension. Yeah, those those aren't good. Uh, that that's bad. We don't want anything to do with that. I'm going to tell you that if you spend any time looking at lemonauto.com and look up Harley Davidson and see sort of their track record with some of these recalls, it's 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 crazy. It's uh, how about losing both your headlights? That's not a good day. As in going out or falling off the bike. <laughs> 2019, 2000. Uh, so we're starting with uh, 2005 soft tails going all the way up to 2021 sportsters. The bulbs inside the headlight may fail, causing a loss of both high and low beams. Contact your dealer, get new bulbs. Uh, ah, the H4 long lives don't work there. But yeah, they might not be making it. I think those are actually. Yeah, I think those are actually the big old ugly bulbs. Yeah. But it is bonkers. Uh, how about the powertrain may unexpectedly shut down and not restart? Eh, that's not sounds, the thing you want to have happen at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, it sounds like the ECM again. Kind of weird. Uh, it's it's all the live wires. Yep. So it's all the live wires. Every electric Harley Davidson. It's the battery management. It's something. Yeah. Power control board or whatever. But the point being. Shut down. No start. That's that's not that's not a good one. How about the unintended activation of the rear brake? (laughs) What would cause that? I don't know. But twelve thousand two hundred six hundred and twenty four people need to be concerned about it. A a brake line up against the exhaust. A brake line against the exhaust. Yeah, that sounds like an ABS thing there. Recalling certain 2019 and 2020 um, ultras and trikes, the trike traction control system software may respond incorrectly to a faulty rear wheel speed signal by activating one of its two rear brakes. Hey, guys, I'm going to tell you a little something about trikes. They have three wheels. And on the back of the motorcycle, you have two wheels. And if either one of the brakes on the back of the motorcycle activate without the other one, you become a big wheel with a special skid steer, uh, you know, thing. (laughs) So that means instead of going straight, you're going sideways and upside down at whatever speed you used to be. Mm -hmm. It's not great. It's pretty bad. Unintended activation of one rear brake could lead to an unexpected. Now, this is and if I ever need to undersell anything in my life, this is the phrase I'm going to use. Could lead to an unexpected change in vehicle direction which may increase the risk of a crash. Well, no shit. Their traction control on their trike involves actuating the the calipers. Yeah, like a Toyota Tundra. 
<laughs> Except for the fact it has one less wheel. Yeah, exactly. And you're doing this on the back wheels that we should never, ever, see, the ever. Ve the Vespa is smart enough to at least just interrupt the, the ignition. Yeah, spark interrupt. That's yeah, spark yeah, interrupt. Right, right. It's, that's cheap and cheerful. Yeah. yeah cheap this thing and is, cheerful. you know what would be a really good idea? To shoot you into oncoming traffic. Okay. <laughs> I have a good one for you because I saved the best for last. Clutch fluid may leak and cause a loss of control. Potential number of units affected, 177,636. That's a lot. It goes from pretty much anything after 2013 with FL in the letters. So it's the big boys. Yeah. Of which I own. Right. It's the big boys. It's the road kings. It's all the stuff. It's the CVOs. It's the anniversary tour glides, tri glides. It's all of them. Yeah. The secondary clutch actuator cylinder may leak fluid internally. So don't look for the leak. And the clutch master cylinder may lose the ability to generate enough lift to disengage the clutch. If the clutch cannot be disengaged, it can result in a loss of control, increasing the risk of a crash. No shit, really. Harley-Davidson will notify owners, unless you bought it used, and dealers will install a new secondary clutch actuator piston assembly free of charge. By the way, I have a motorcycle that this, is, that this affects, and I'm now not feeling, feeling not so special. <laughs> because when you have a because problem, you realize there are 100,000 of the 177,636 <laughs> people need to be concerned about a clutch that may suddenly stop working. Boy, there's nothing that tells me I'm an individual by, oh. by like buying a bike 180,000 people buy. How long do these stay active? Because I see that was in 2018. Right, that's 2018. So they're just active until. Yeah. Like, yeah. And now most dealers, uh, I will, I can give you guys a little bit yeah. of insider baseball on this one. There is a there is a statute of limitations on recalls. Everyone says, oh, no, recalls forever, man. Recalls forever. No, the dealer is only required to satisfy a recall for 10 years. OK, oh. because many, many times a company will say we had a problem with this bike and we're going to make a bunch of parts to fix that bike. But we're not going to make these parts forever. They're not still making a arms for Ford 1959 Fords that had a recall at the Ford factory. Right. You know, they're only going to do it for so long. So they're going to do what the government or what the lawyers think is reasonable to cover their ass for a reasonable period of time. Well, I mean, we talked about the we talked about the Guzzi hydraulic lifter. Conversion. Absolutely. Because yep. the Absolutely. old V11s are just not going to happen. Yeah. Now, you also mentioned uh, unless it's used or. Yeah, because once you're no longer the the original original owner of record, the motor company or whoever it is doesn't know who you sold it to. Their job is to alert the, the warranty registered owner of the vehicle. If there's a recall. Now, if you sold that to your neighbor and they sold it to somebody else and they sold it to somebody else, well, there's no chain of that, right? Everyone used to think that, oh, well, I have a used Honda Civic and I might get a recall notice, even though I'm not the original purchaser. Takata airbags is a great example. Yeah, I, I, right. they chased me for four right. years over right. Takata for the passenger side on my element that I bought used at a Honda dealer. So that and that's level the only reason. So that level of attention to tracking down future owners of the vehicle is going through the BMV and the state DOT or the state title bureaus to find out who those owners are. It's nice when they do that, but it's not federally required. Oh, OK. And the reason I'm asking yeah. is I own a used Yep. Kia, that's actually Tristan drives it, but still yep. my name. So we get a couple of recall notices. And so absolutely. Yep. I was curious that I'm assuming that they're tracking it down yep. through the BMW. Or and I get like recall that. notices for cars that I used to own. Yeah. That I don't anymore. Yeah. Some companies will, some companies like Honda in particular will go the distance and they will track these down. But I can tell you that it's not mandated. It's not federally mandated. When a company wants to show they're doing a good job, they will do that. They will they will go the distance to track down registration information, title information. But I can also tell you, I've owned many motorcycles that I've done a check on and realized, oh, yeah, wow, there's a recall on that. Yep. So where do you go to do the check? Because that's the next logical question. So to Harley up. Davidson, I did. Thank you. That's 
leads me into the next thing. If you go to Harley Davidson's website, Harley Davidson website does have a VIN search on their website. So you can punch in the VIN of your bike on Harley Davidson's website. Many dealers who run their own sites do have that on their site as well, because it is actually good to get people in the dealership yeah. where you can take care of the warranty item, but also upsell them on something fun. Right. And, and great opportunity for an opportunity to shout out to Rob. Capel, since mm-hmm. he messaged us the other day, yep. uh, NHTSA will actually, if you go to NHTSA.gov yep. and put your VIN number in, it will pop up your recalls. Guaranteed. You do not need to go by a manufacturer. Go to NHTSA.gov, punch in the VIN of every vehicle you own. Yep. You'll know what recalls are out for them. That's great from Rob Cable. That's yep. absolutely a, a great, great tip from, uh, from Rob. How about this? 174,000 bikes. The brakes may fail. Due to not flushing the brake fluid. <laughs> now, initially, that's a no brainer. We don't think we need to have a we don't need to, We don't need to have a, a recall on that. Right. The brakes, you know, you're supposed to as part of maintenance of your vehicle, you're supposed to flush as, your brake. Fi- fluid. As I was recently told yep. by Piaggio, yep. every two years, you have to flush both front and rear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder where B- Piaggio got that. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> I wonder who clued them to that. <laughs> oh, BMW. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't otherwise, don't otherwise, don't have don't have four year old brake fluid. Your ABS your ABS might fail. Right, it's exactly right. Well, here we have one right here, uh, and this is no shit. This is saying to people, two year maintenance schedule, and it's physically right here, saying that mm. you got to do this. Um, this is a big deal because there is a recall on it. And it says Harley Davidson will notify owners and dealers will flush the entire brake system with new platinum label dot four brake fluid. I love the platinum label bullshit free of charge. I'm going to say that again for the cheap seats. They're listing motorcycles back here to 2008 road glides. I also have one of these motorcycles and it turns out I might be able to get my brake fluid changed free of charge at my local Harley Davidson dealership. Now that I know about this campaign, if you don't know about it, you may be missing out on free maintenance opportunities. You may be missing out on free upgrade opportunities. Pretty fucking rad. When you have stuff like that, spend a half an hour, just drilling through Harley Davidson's recall campaigns. They are terrifying. They're just absolutely terrifying. Um, One of the ones that the newest one they just launched is that the wiring harness may ground itself against your timing cam cover. And, uh, but it's only one of the particular parts of the wiring harness. The part that goes directly from the battery to the starter 60 amp service. That's the one that contains the big lightning bolts, the ones that makes the fire. Uh, That has my favorite. Yeah. That has a tendency apparently to ground itself out to the motorcycle. And we can tell you that when you ground your main hot positive, the thick wire, the big red danger colored wire, when you ground that out to the engine, which is grounded, it's welding. It's instant fucking welding. And I'm going to promise you that a whole lot of things in your motorcycle aren't going to work after that. Um, And you're probably going to have to change your underwear uh, it's going to be ugly. Oh, the fire is going to be spectacular. Yeah, I, it really is. The fire is going to be spectacular. But more importantly, you've now bricked your motorcycle and the solution is taken into your dealer and they're going to put a, a stress relief, a strain relief on that wiring harness, probably a 73 cent part, just to make sure that that high tension lead doesn't vibrate against your motor because they tend to vibrate. They are Harley Davidson's. And a sharp metal edge will cut through that insulation on that wire right quick in a hurry. So these are big things. And I'm I'm, I'm shitting on Harley Davidson here, but all motorcycles, every company. I I looked at BMW. Harley Davidson had over 100. BMW had 71. (laughs) Okay, so I mean, I could, Mike, we could, we could aim this light at BMW pretty easily if we wanted to. But it is funny. The word crash appears in so many of them. (laughs) Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Well, and segue into your next recall that you were talking about here as well since we were pointing to another company here we go you ready you this is one you brought up it's homework okay <laughs> i can tell you how to save a lot of money if you want to buy a small honda if you have it in your head to have an entry level a small honda 
a little cute Honda that you can have fun with and you can grab it by the scruff of the neck. And it's a Honda that every member of our podcast has gotten to ride around on and enjoy quite a bit. And that's the Honda CB300F and CBR300R. They're great little bikes. Honda sold a metric shit ton of them. And we all loved them. And I myself personally think they're one of the best bikes Honda ever built. They're super cool. They're fun. They're just neat. Unfortunately, they had a bit of a dodgy can crankshaft. And the crankshaft is a rather important part of the engine. Some might even say it's the most important part of the engine. It does. It does make it go. It does make it go. 11,424 motorcycles were affected in just the United States. And for a little bike like that, that's kind of a lot of motorcycles. You know, we're not talking about their most popular item. And news of this recall, news of this problem, <laughs> before it became a recall, it became a problem. Uh, Honda didn't jump right out and dive on the grenade on this one. They spent a little bit of time with Honda people saying, hey, you fucked up. You didn't change your oil. Hey, you fucked up. You worked your bike too hard. Hey, you fucked up. You didn't do things right. And that's why your crank went away. But it turns out the cranks were bad. Turns out the parts were bad. And it turns out that there was a point in the relationship where they realized, shit, fuck, <laughs> we got to fix these. It and, is uh, our fault. Yeah, it is our fault. It is our fault. Was What's Hodge's number on the Stella crankshaft failure? <laughs> All. All. <laughs> right. 90, 98. Oh, no, he says like 11, only 11% 11 have ever failed. Yeah, I know. That's what he says. <laughs> yeah. I think, so but you know we, what? When he said are. that, he was working at the True. company, right? So here we um, are with pretty our, much every CBR 300 has been sold. Our good friend, uh, Emma Booten, worked at a pretty high volume motorcycle shop in California, and she got real good at replacing the crankshafts in these motorcycles. She could do them right quick in a hurry. And Honda doesn't ever give you enough time. If you think replace the crankshaft in a motorcycle... Oh, I'm automatically thinking eight hours. Yep. Right. I'm thinking eight hours. I think Honda was paying out four and a half. Uh, or something. Six is what they were saying. Six. Yeah. Six is book. Six, six book. Ouch. Ouch. So you're losing two hours on every oh, absolutely. job. Guaranteed. Plus. Because the first one's going to be 12 hours. Oh, God. Yes. And then you absolutely. might get down to about yeah. eight. But six, is six, six. And then you're going to have to come up with a couple more numbers. To be, oh, well, we had to work on this, too. So. So, again, if you ever want to know how to make how to how to soften the impact of some pretty bad news. Thanks, Honda. Faulty crankshafts are likely to cause an increased load on the connecting rod on affected Honda CB300F and CBR300R motorcycles. Faulty crankshafts are likely to cause an increased load on the connecting rod. Yes, because when something that's supposed to be spinning stops spinning suddenly, it yep. creates an increased load on the piece of metal that's fucking hooked to it. Oops. Yeah, and the I wonder if the journal is too big. When something, oh, here you go. We're gonna tell, no, gonna no, tell it's, you. It's in the deep dive. The added load may cause the plating on the bearing rod retainer to wear. A worn retainer is likely to corrode in the presence of blow by gases. Should the connecting rod bearing retainer fail, the engine may stall and be unable to restart. If your engine stalls at fourteen thousand RPM. You got a bad day because your drivetrain is probably engaged because you're probably in fourth gear getting it or fifth gear getting it or sixth gear getting it. These motors like to spin. When this motor stalls or suddenly ceases forward motion and it's hooked to the back tire, well, it's all going with it. And your back tire is going to turn into a giant Sharpie marker just <laughs> painting the roadway. If you can manage to hang on to that, if neutral and the clutch haven't completely left the building at this point, which I think they're going to be ineffective once the crank stops. Oh, spinning, yeah, no, this is this is going to be a day. I had a 40 mile an hour seizure on a CT 70 with an auto clutch because you couldn't grab, you the, can't clutch. grab the clutch. No. And I had to ride it. I was kind of in a little bit of a turn. Uh, I shit my pants. <laughs> I mean, it was. Yeah. Dude, I had my daughter on that P 200 I had. After the rebuild, when I decided that it was a bad idea to put the plastic cooling hood back on it, like a professional. And so I was doing like 60 miles an hour, and it was the smoothest 60 miles an hour I ever heard. And when that fucker locked up, that was the scariest, because my daughter was in the back, like just a helmet. We weren't really 
trying to get it, you know, but you're right. It just, it, it, you want to talk about a paint marker. I left a 500 foot long skid all the way to the bottom of this hill. It's terrifying. Oh man. It is terrifying. And I like the way that Honda writes their copy on this. They are literally giving you the numbers. The first issue, January 2015, when Honda's Thai factory received a report of connecting rod bearing failure, right, in Thailand. A second report occurred later that month, on the 29th of April. Honda received a third report with five occurrences, all in Thailand. Oh, you have nothing to worry about, America. Thai Honda Manufacturing began an investigation in May, but was unable to determine the cause. On the 12th of May, Honda received a fourth report involving two incidents in the United States. Both were followed by complaints of abnormal no engine noises. No shit. You yeah. really think there were some abnormal engine noises? I'm pretty sure that thing didn't sound good at all. After receiving a fifth report on the 25th of May, which was again from Thailand, Honda Thailand asked for help from Honda's quality department in Japan to review warranty claims. Honda Thailand began inspecting new crankshaft assemblies and found the crank pin diameter on some parts were out of specification. The company implemented a tooling change to improve the consistency of the crankshaft manufacturing process. Honda R&D in Japan tested the bearing retainer surface, plating it while it received five more reports, including three incidents in the U.S. on 30th of June. Honda initiated recall procedures. As of the 8th of July, Honda has received 48 warranty claims and 41 field reports related to this issue. No injuries were reported due to the issue. Recalled units will be inspected and their crankshaft assemblies will be replaced by Honda dealerships. It should take around six hours for the repair job. Yes, if you're at the factory with factory tooling and you're on the assembly line when it happens. Yep. Now, so far they've thrown around numbers like one, two, four, five, and eight, culminating in 48. <laughs> 48. Well, that doesn't seem like a big number at all, does it? And yet they say 11,424 11, motorcycles are affected by the recall in the United States. That's just the United States. We are their smallest fucking market. How do you go from, oh, yeah, we're doing a great job. It was only 48 bikes to a recall that covers over 11,000 bikes in just our country where we don't like to buy 300s. A country where the 300 cc motorcycle is not their best selling product by any fucking measure whatsoever so i love that tough how many bikes did you say Eleven thousand just in the u.s i couldn't find numbers 11, for worldwide 424 yeah. couldn't find numbers for worldwide okay and then say nine, yeah. six, six, interesting yeah. that these uh crankshafts that's six million eight hundred and fifty four dollars worth of repairs oh at, at 90 dollars at 90 an bucks an hour yeah. Yeah. how many million six million eight hundred and fifty four just in the u.s four hundred and just the u.s just ones. in the u.s damn sorry chris Six million bucks really is not that big. I mean, it's not for Honda. It's not that big. No, but the, a lot of money. The bite in the dick is when you're a Honda dealer, like our friends, and when you're a Honda dealer, and because of your economy, you did sell 14 of those last year. And now you got to do 14 of these jobs, which which Tom tells oh, yeah. you are not going to take six hours. No. So but you got to do 14 of them. All the rest of your work has to stop. Because this recall has to happen right away. And so you have to eat yeah. any... So if Tom gets one of these, mm -hmm. he gets... Honda pays you for six hours, right. but nothing more. Correct. So then you have to eat any time that he has to go over, even yep. though the job really isn't a six-hour job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's fucked up. I can't really say I enjoyed tearing apart five <laughs> brand new Royal Enfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see the At least they I, were clean. I tagged yeah. you in a thing today. Did you see it? <laughs> a a little little fastest did. Indian motorcycle? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you yeah. said something. Yeah, and and said I was something. like, ooh. They're going to have some cranks to be replaced. In there. <laughs> World's fastest Indian should ever only ever be talking about Burt Monroe. Well, it's but it's but I know it's a brand new sport bike oh, yeah. and it's a Bajaj. Yeah. Super Bajaj. And the, the tail is higher. Well, that the than giraffe, giraffe pussy. pussy. <laughs> but it was it was on a stand. It was on a stand. <laughs> so the back was on a stand. The yeah. front was not. So I don't care. Added quite a bit. That rear that rear angle of attack yeah. on the back of that motorcycle is Bosozoku. But not only that, yeah. but like if you look at any MotoGP bike or any, because they're, they're, they're saying that they want to compete with the, yeah. the MotoGP bikes. Right, they do. Right? Yeah. So if you look at that, every single one is put into a wind tunnel and yes. like the, the wind screens literally go and like match the helmets huh. so that the thing becomes one just perfect wind tunnel huh. bike. Yeah. This has no windscreen. It's just a giant well, spiky thing that sticks. Well, again, up. also, 
I believe that this is made of clay. <laughs> <laughs> this is done so that it, it's already, look, it's already been completely successful, Sleepy. Mm. It's in like seven motorcycle podcasts. And when that seven, thing seizes right? up, you're going to yeah. make clay in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> it's already done its job. Yeah. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Okay. Bajaj is going to build the world's fastest Indian motorcycle. And we're all talking about it. Yeah. You know what they have to do now? Nothing. Right. They don't have to do shit. You mean it'll go 75 miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> it only has to go one mile an hour faster than any other Indian, than yes. any other Indian yes. built motorcycle. Yes, but the real question is, is what's the gas mileage? <laughs> well, you know, does it seat six? Right. Right. It right. was weird for a super we, bike how it had the joke. giant floor panel so you could put five people on Stephanie, it. Stephanie, <laughs> so you could sit side step. Well, side step well let's be perfectly honest, though. Since it is, it, it, it's it's the world's fastest Indian, and Bajaj literally makes, what, everybody else's super bikes they now? They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. It really can't, hold, you know, really, it really, it's just, it's just going to be a rebadged KTM. Probably. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, well okay, a right. KTM before it's Rebadged batched. Triumph <laughs> right. at this point, yeah. Okay, so... Not to be, since we're talking about Indians, since we're talking about Honda, <laughs> it turns out <laughs> crankshaft problems, you can, in fact, teach a new dog old tricks mm. because Honda India has managed to do such a good job of maintaining Honda's specs, specs and reliability and, and building quality. Good name. Now there, guess guess what the problems happened in India, the Hness. Oh no, the Hness. Are they blowing rods? They're blowing cranks, baby. They're hey, blowing cranks. Hey Dan, on that note, can I see your cock? <laughs> See, I don't want Dan's uh, cock. <laughs> I gave it a sniff, and that's all I needed to know. That's I pretty much where I'm going cock. with this. But mm -hmm. so, here's a tip for Enrico from Ride Apart, dude. I, I love journalists in general. I want to give you guys every benefit of the doubt. But when you're about to write a story about crankshafts failing, do not start it by saying. Suffice it to say, bad English, by the way, suffice it to say that the Indians have got their manufacturing game dialed in. But just like all manufacturers, they aren't perfect. Okay, don't open with a declarative statement that they've got their manufacturing game I mean, dialed in and then spend seven paragraphs telling me about how they done screwed the pooch. I mean, I'm sitting here about to put Dan's cock in my mouth and that guy is deep throat in Honda. He is. He's <laughs> really, really... <laughs> like all manufacturers, they aren't perfect. BMW's like, excuse me? <laughs> Again, 71 recalls, right? Number two only to Harley Davidson. Right. They beat Fiat. So... <laughs> Congratulations, BMW Motorrad. You're, you beat Fiat. You're worse than Fiat. Right. You're worse than Fiat. Okay. Thousands of CB models are being recalled due to two potentially serious issues. I'll be the judge of that. The first issue potentially involves thousands upon thousands of models. I like when you're talking about anything from India, counting shit goes out the window. Right. You don't even try to count shit anymore. You're just like, there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's a lot. As it surrounds a faulty <laughs> wheel speed sensor. Bajaj doesn't even keep track anymore. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they have no idea. How many of those ask her? How many people work in your factory? Thousands we, we and know. thousands. We, we have no, no idea. idea. Right. According and, to Honda, an improper molding procedure could result in water entering the speed sensor assembly, which means it already has, yeah. causing a malfunction. The malfunction would subsequently result in speedometer failure. Now, you normally think that's not a big deal. I've ridden lots of motorcycles with no speedometers. It's not a big deal. Ooh, that's a big deal. The problem is now our ABS and our traction control systems rely on that data. Mm. Now we got a problem. Because on a lot of motorcycles, if your ABS and your traction control lights are flashing angrily at you, they don't let the motorcycle go anywhere. Yep. And so you could have a bricked bike as a result of that. However, perhaps more troubling that is that this defect was discovered only now, some four years since the affected models entered production. So yeah, all CB300F, 300Rs, and CB350s manufactured between October 2020 and 2024 are part of the recall. And at which point Noriko writes, yikes. And I think that's good journalistic journalistic integrity to do the yikes in Terabang. Because this, this is this is a actual 
this isn't an editorial. This no. is an actual journal journalist article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Article. You would have gotten a D, my friend. Yeah, you would have gotten a D. Yeah, it's not great. Again, we are talking about. He starts to say by the Indians have got their manufacturing game dialed in. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the here's the fucking lead, and he buried the lead. There is another issue with Honda's more recently produced CB350 models. And it's one that could cause some serious damage if left unattended. The camshaft of CB350 models produced between June and July of 2024 have a manufacturing defect which could impact the vehicle's optimal functioning. Now, the extent of which the camshaft could affect the vehicle's performance wasn't disclosed, but as someone who's been on the receiving end of engine internal damage, getting the issue sorted out is something you'll want to do much sooner than later. Uh, Here's what I'm going to tell you. Honda never makes only a few of anything. If Honda's going to go to the trouble... There's no such thing as a rare Honda. Right. If Honda's going to go to the trouble of building a camshaft, they're going to build... 11,000, 12,000, 30,000, oh, yeah. yeah, 80,000 yeah. camshafts. In fact, based on their own statements, thousands and thousands. My, my money's going to be on furnace failure and harden, their hardness. That's their hardening right. Problem. Diamond light coating yep. kind of problem, right? Which but a lot of vehicles Camshafts are, are going to be too soft and they're yep. going to be wasted. Yep. And they're going to see excessive wear on a camshaft. Yep. Here's the problem. They're admitting at this point, according to Honda, because that is according to Honda. And now they're admitting to produce between June and July. Like, oh, like, like for June, we changed the design. No, I think. Do you remember that time in June when we just said, oh, the hell with it. Let's double the thickness of the coating. No, no let's cut it in half instead. They had that new guy and he right. forgot to I'd, run it through the heat treating process. Well, I think I th- I've, I've been on the other end of this. Oh. Yeah, I think it is going to be a problem with the heat, tra- heat treating furnace. My, because this happens, furnaces will break down during heat treat. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I no think shit. It had, I think it had one month. And down. I would think that if it was goddamn Honda, if a furnace quit working, a red light would go on oh, somewhere no. and put all those units no. over in the corner. And you stop. The what do we line. do with all these no. uh, camshafts? Eh, they yeah. were in, they were in for a while. They should be okay. This isn't Melt fling them poo. Down this and is start all fucking over. Honda. Oh, really? Oh, trust me, I've uh, I've heard uh, some stories that I can't talk about that uh, this happens. <laughs> Well, here's the story we can talk about because Honda did say they have a manufacturing defect. Yeah. Honda said that. Yeah. Not Enrico, the journalist. Honda. I have a little experience with camshafts that fail. Kind of a lot of experience with camshafts. I've sold a lot of bikes that a bike came back into my shop five years after we sold it. 11,000 miles on it, 12,000 miles on it. And the camshaft was a beautiful shade of blue. It's not supposed to be blue. Nope. That wasn't like the custom anodized blue racing camshaft. (laughs) Was that the first or second time I replaced his camshaft? Second time. Second time. And even after replacing the journals, even after replacing all the parts that come in contact with anything that makes warm. The white XC500 or whatever? Yeah. And it was every XC500 after that. Oh. So that particular plant power plant, that 500cc single, it just... Yep. Cooked camshafts. I've, I've heard the same thing about the, I think the 400, CD 400 T. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Hawk used to yeah. eat, eat camshafts. Yep. yep. So, you know, and I've always been told that, again, heat treatment problem. Heat treating was a problem. And on those, we had a lot, there were a lot of oil not getting to where it should go. Yeah. Uh, Honda has a long history, by the way. Every V45, V65 Magna had a problem where the oil didn't like to make it all the way to the top of the motor. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that's where they put all those um, valves. Expensive parts. 16 yeah. valves. They're the important things. In a lot of cams, four cams and they 16 valves. They also have a really bad problem of people dragging on the backyards and trying to fix them. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just stop. Just quit doing that. Give up. Just, just let them go. Spend your money on something else. <laughs> but that's sad to see because, you know, we had, a lot of, we had a lot of happiness and joy around the CB350. Yeah. We had a lot of happiness and joy around the CB300R. Well, they caught the problem. Okay, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens for the brain. Hey, speaking of Honda, yeah, what's the best news here this month? What did Honda finally bring us? Three letters, starts with D, 
Ends in X. Ends in X, and it's not dicks. <laughs> I've never seen so many white 50-year-old men have boners. So oh, happy. <laughs> so, so happy. Since, since, we've spent, since we've spent the past 25, 30 minutes talking about horribleness, let's talk about the greatness. It's so happy. Well, if one thing Honda can do is build a lay-down motor. Oh, yeah. That's what we've understood. No, one thing Honda can do is resurrect a 1959 That's design. True. Exactly. And, and be like, we can make more money on this than we make on a 1800 gold wing. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Profit m- margin wise. Yep. Because this thing was bought and paid for a long time ago. Yeah, there's technology there from like 72. Still. Oh, absolutely. Um, the way they made it look like a Trail 70, but I have looked at one in person at Mid Ohio. And in a Trail 70, that, fa- that frame is a monocoque frame. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. It's yeah. it's pressed together. Yep. If you look carefully at this, you can see it's actually two pieces. So it's got a left side and a right side. But they did that so have to a place for I'm sorry, to have a place to hide all the things they don't want you to see. Yeah. Is behind the word Dax. Dax aka Dachshund. Uh so how come they were able to not put a giant air box that ruined the whole thing like they did on the monkey? I don't. Right? Uh, like the monkey should have a motor it, like okay, that. Okay, okay, Phil hit it. A minute ago, he said basically the blue panels are yeah. literally panels that bolt onto the bike. Well, there they are. No, they are steel. They're metal, and they are the understandable. Frame. But they're, they're, they're the frame. Okay, I've been there. I done that. I crawled up all in. I I tricked the guy into letting me ride it. Yeah, he's like, I'm selling this for eight thousand dollars. I said, that's it. This gray market bike that you snuck in here, you you're gonna sell this. You're that's okay it. with not leaving here with this bike. You're okay with me buying this bike right now and. You're walking around for the rest of the go, I got plenty of bikes to ride. I challenged his manhood every way I could to the point where he was forcing <laughs> me to take it for a ride. <clears throat> Meanwhile, 75 other people's like, man, can I ride it? And he's like, go fuck your hat. Yeah. And I was like, thanks. Copyrighted. Um, but you saved yourself four grand because, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's so, yeah. It's I gonna- just was very curious having seen it. And. He let me, you know, I, I was able to kind of lay down on the ground underneath it and really look at it. It didn't hurt the fact that I was also riding a, you know, a brand new Honda product. Uh, so it's in the frame. It's it, cool. It's, but it's in the frame. It's so under you, your seat. If you rotate, if you get this, yeah. the other side view, it's got a huge chrome, like early Sportster chrome. It, no, it has what it's supposed to have. Yeah, the yeah. big air filter. It, yeah. That actually looks more like an ST90. Yep. It does well, look more like an that's ST90. That's the thing. They're calling it an ST125. Right. And so because, and I'll go ahead and I want to pull this up for the folks at home so they can see it yeah. <laughs> because they're going to want to. And it comes with a free Dachshund. And it little, comes with a free Dachshund. And oh. it's the one mini moto that you can ride two up. Yep. Yeah. Well, did you see the pictures of the guy riding it two up? It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. You can. <laughs> okay. Let, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Anybody who's not our size can probably ride two up. I, uh, <laughs> I, looking at they were very careful to find the correct model to ride this bike. And then they found the perfect father son combo to ride it where the, the kid who's eight years old is 80% the size of the father. Yeah. You know, um, it's cool. Well, there's a reason why they used a dachshund in the advertisement. Well, it makes on. him yeah. look bigger. It does. It does. <laughs> but it is, it does look fantastic. I'm, I'm oh, extremely yeah. in love with it. I thought it was funny. I, I posted the picture of it. Like a, when I found out earlier this week, and our buddy Bruce, who has yeah. been, you know, a vintage motorcycle guy for as long as I can remember and known you guys for longer than I have ever known him, was like, what's Dax? And I was like, what? Like, you didn't know what that yeah. was? Well, like, that's a European on. thing. We, he, we he's never, far too American. I was going right to say, yeah, we never okay. got into that. Right. My yeah. my cousin had one of these in, in, <clears throat> in baby poop brown. Oh, and I good. hated him. He would not let me ride it. Would <clears throat> not let me ride it. He was an asshole anyway. But this is kind of the bike that I went. Okay, I want one of these. If yeah, you look around, <laughs> you can find a picture of a British journalist riding this who is 5'10 and 180 pounds. And then you start to realize it's kind of a small bike. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's oh, a yeah. monkey bike. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is. It's a monkey I, bike. I was never under the assumption that it was right. a large motorcycle. No, no. I'm very happy with it, though, and I think it'll make us all very happy. I mean, those are still 12-inch wheels, right? right. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, like, I don't really want a new bike anymore except for this. Like, this is definitely something I want. 
He's, and he's, it's nice to have attainable dreams. So yeah. after buying the BMW, right. that he was never going to buy another bike, but then the Aprilia popped up, so he's never going to buy another bike. But now never. this has popped up, and he's well, not going to buy another bike anymore after this. Well, my wife... My and he's wife, done buying guitars, too. He's done buying guitars, too. I like... There was the, the blue-gray one. Yeah, so yeah. they're only coming in two colors for yeah, us. There you go. Right, they're only coming in two colors for us. Piper, uh, and Piper this picked is, that color. She's like, I want that. Uh, this is the color that was call, at AMA Vintage call Days. Me, yeah. Call me when they do electric piss yellow. Right. Yeah, and that's true. Uh, we can make that happen. I believe that <laughs> I believe that the correct color for this bike, this is the pearl gray that you see right up there right now. How about they, they're not going to give you the red one the first year? Yeah. Right. They're or gonna the wait. Like the, one, the gold number. Like gold after seeing like after the seeing 70s. the Super Cub in goth black and red, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I think that be that's the way to go. The <laughs> Super Cub in goth, goth black and red is just fuck you enough. Oh yeah, to be like, oh well, look at the the baby blue and white is so authentic. Yeah. The red and white is so authentic. No goth black and red. Now here's my problem. <laughs> yeah. Here's my problem with this though. Yeah. So this probably represents all the European bikes in the 70s and etc. But I remember all my friends that had them, and I did not. So I used to, I mean, literally, like, dream about them at night. Oh, yeah. They all had a high front fender. Well, I, was, I, was, I knew you were going to say yeah. that. <laughs> I already, yeah. have, I I already that. have a shipment of high front fender I kits coming in from China. That. That. Okay. Yep. Right. This is going to be my new business. I like that green. That, uh, that John Deere. No, it's not even John Deere. It's like a football. What football team was that? Was it the Packers? That was Green Bay. Was, thinking, was it Green Bay? Yeah. Green Bay. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not football enough or northern yeah. enough. That was Green Bay right there. But that is, there yeah. you go. But yeah. why would that I mean, is, look at that. Like, they did it such a great job, and then they slapped the Is that the, the Nasty right Dax? Is that what that says? Oh, my God. It might be. It might be. Anyway. That is that is very, like, not, what it That's the naughty. I'm sorry. naughty. It's the naughty. Oh. N-A-U-T-Y. Bring me that model. I've the never naughty seen Dax. that. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> it's Tom, your can fault. I have my cock back in Here, it's over your shoulder. Spit it out. track your cock. I've never seen the Naughty Dax before. Well, no, because it's well, European no, we only. We release. didn't get it. Yeah. We well, just I mean, have never even seen it in a magazine. 50cc vertical engine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, did that be because the Street Magic looks almost exactly yeah, identical. It, it is very much in the same line as the Street Magic, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Small so but wait, mighty. build your own. What can you build about it? Now, hold on, my friend. <laughs> We're getting ahead. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the color. Yeah, and, and right. That I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You can't. You're not going to be able to play that game. Now, did they get the wheels right? Because the little four point stars was kind of like a thing too. Like, what does the wheels look like on the new one? I, I didn't really. I'm gonna go ahead. Wait, I got like a, I got to service more than one master right oh, now. Oh, I'm sorry. Those are the original Com Stars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So these are just yeah, alloys. Yeah. So these are five spoke by the look of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Five spoke alloys. Yeah. They yeah. they almost look like they're off the ground. Like they just, I right, think we're going to bend off the ground. We can yeah. add original style wheels to mm-hmm. our line of, uh, literally of comp stars. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Because those pictures of, and the we're going to need a crash. Dax. We're also going to need a crash pan. The, the bars, the chrome. Yeah. Pan. Oh, yeah. right. Right. There's no, there's no oh, bash. Right. Plate. Cause the, and the original handlebars were the ones where you could unscrew the thing and they could fold, they'd fold down. So you could put them in, uh, those are in development now. <laughs> oh, look at the seat. Yeah, that that, that is oh. the the Dax, the 1981. Oh, because that's like the um, the, 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 Express, CT7, the Honda Express seat. The CT790 continued to be offered in the U.S. through 1991. Collectors and customizers continued to seek them out long after production stopped. 1981 Dax Honda. And so that is four speed, according to the sticker on the side. And it says ST50 on the seat. Yep. So ST, uh, ST50 on the saddle. So that is some pretty cool shit. Uh, Dax, there it is, Dax or Dachshund. The, uh, that's there. We're finally going to get it. I'm so, I'm so proud of Honda for teasing us with this and then giving us the two shittiest colors right. that nobody would ever want so, ever in the history. So, John, do you still have your deposit at Sills? Uh, I have to figure out what the sleepy sewer guy... Or yeah, grumpy sore guy was the one who had that worked out. Not at Seals. It was up at uh, in Illyria there yeah, or, on or the Amherst edge. on the edge. Yeah. yeah, on the edge. Yeah. So that's the Dax. That's the Dax. Uh, like I said, cheers to the guy at Mid Ohio. Let me take it for a little spin. That was great. Appreciate it. Uh, I got to crawl around it, look at Did it. Did you I was like, ask him how he got it? Yeah. Uh, what happened? He bought it in Europe and shipped it over with no issues. Well, he put it in a crate with some other stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good man. Good man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. As long as the motor never is not as mo- long as the motor is not connected to the frame, it's not a complete. Motorcycle. Oh no, it came in one hundred percent intact. <laughs> he took the uh, spark plug out. Yeah, he's like it's display only. 
I think it was hiding between two pieces of kitchen equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, never let the law get in the way of a good time. The, uh, and this is a pretty great different motors though. Interesting that, you know, you have that upright motor versus the old natural lay down motors. Kind of, kind of cool. Right. That weirdo, that weirdo upright in the, no, na- in the naughty Dax. I have to find one of those now. The naughty Dax. Yeah. Yeah. The naughty Dax. And yeah, it's just a weird, it's a weird thing. Yeah. Definitely a weird thing. So I think the Dax is going to make everybody real happy and real interested for a little while. But oh. talking about monkey bikes, we have some major monkey news. Major monkey news, including monkey business, some new monkey business. Yeah. Talk to us, Chris. We have a new Facebook page for y'all's adventure. Uh, tell us more. So the Facebook page is uh, Monkey Cub USA, and we're going to be posting all of our travels and travails uh, upon the uh, Facebook page is as well as somebody can do it, which is not going to be me. So, Chris, you, your Facebook page says this event will take place in 2004. Well, we did that for you, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they're very, this trip is very special. They, they got that Honda time machine. They do so. have a TARDIS yeah. on board, ready to go. Um, look at these two guys posing on the front of this thing, just owning it. I mean, fucking owning it. Uh, so there's, there's Pete. They're about to throw down. Pete, and then there's Spalding. Spalding. Je- Jeff Spalding, yeah. Captain Spalding. Yeah. Hooray for Captain Spalding. The, uh, get that up there? Yep, we got that. So let's ride small bore bikes across the USA. Why? To see the country at a leisurely pace. When? October 1st, 2024. <laughs> I'll do a little editing on, on the flight. Who? Danger Jeff. Speedy Pete. H-I-V Chris? Oh, hi Viz. I get it. Hi Viz Chris. Hi Viz Chris. They sh- they can't shorten that that way. They can't. H-I-V Chris is not acceptable shortness. Yeah, no. You can't shorten <laughs> hi Viz. Hi Viz is already shortened. H-I-V little Z. Look, hi Viz is two fucking syllables. Yeah. If we're going to say H-I-V, that's three syllables. That's, that's not suggest- shortening. That suggests something completely different. <laughs> right. You're pe- suggesting pe- a whole different a, level of are, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Tin Man Tim. So that's Brother Tim. Brother Tim, who's Tin Man, an who's an HVAC guy. That yeah. all makes sense. And BB Gun. Brett Baldy. Brett Baldy. B. 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 Gun. Okay. Of all of them, I understand Hive is Chris works. Hive is Chris. It's three syllables. If we're going to say H I V Chris, that's four syllables. How about H V C? Hive is Chris. Hive is Chris. HVC, also See, true. That's, that's works. Hive is Chris. HVC. And nobody's going to try to make sure that you have medications and stuff <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas Buyers Club Chris. <laughs> right. Uh, could be it. We have HFC Tom. The HFC stands for <laughs> something else entirely. Uh, but I promise you, you need a little editing. We got to change that from October 1st, 2004, and we need to change HIV Chris to something other than HIV <laughs> Chris. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Right now, podcast listeners, go to Facebook.com, groups Monkey Cub USA. Not Monkey Club USA. I went to that. It's not the same. Yeah, that's not it. That's not it. Um, that's a weird one. Uh, but Monkey Cub USA is what you want to go to. Fucking rad, man. Uh, that is super, super cool. Uh, very, very happy for you. And uh, you guys, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. So do you think you're going to be on the road for how long? They actually have video up here of Chris. Yeah. Uh, there's Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Chris is on his monkey. And with his backpack. He's got the backpack. Right? He likes the backpack. Yeah. Yep. No, no helmet, though. But he does Risky. show a lot of control. Yeah, I got to say, that's that's a lot of control. Yep. Keeping the tail out of the spokes, too. Well done, Chris. All right. <laughs> so so the uh, the five bikes were loaded mm-hmm. up yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, they, and by the way, God, they're small. Yeah. Five bikes in that trailer with room to spare. Well, yeah. I, I gotta say there's, I've seen you load bikes before yeah. and I've seen you strap down bikes mm-hmm. and I've got a picture of what they did. Oh yeah. But as I was looking at that, I thought it might be worth it just to pay Phil a hundred bucks to come out here <laughs> and clean this up a little bit. <laughs> So I saw the ratchet strap to a chain uh, affair was interesting, but I thought innovative. <laughs> well, 
I like when they had the one ratchet strapped to the clutch cable. Right. That was good. That's pretty that's good. That's going to hold it really yeah. nicely in or place. Or when you crank the one ratchet strap and the wheel on the other bike comes off the ground. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> so so Brett Baldy's asking those guys. So those guys are out in, uh, in St. Louis right now. Okay. So they left this morning about 10 a.m., went through the rain. Yeah. And all that kind of stuff. So Baldy says... How's our packing job holding up? Are the bikes staying put? So Pete says, just stopped for fuel and checked. One of the D-rings midship failed. <laughs> ah. load, load shift, no damage. Readjustments made rolling. All right. Good to hear. This is Baldy. Good to hear nothing bad happened. They could use a, more substantial D-rings in their trailers. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so you you look at them and they're kind of yeah. they're kind of pinched together. Yep. Well, that's because they they piled in all the C rings and they didn't have room. <laughs> they didn't have room for the D rings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I do Couldn't a lot. Be of... They ratcheted it down too hard. It, again, part of my world is rigging bikes. Like part of my world is strapping well, shit to here's, shit. Here's what right? I was gonna say. Like with the the small as monkey bikes are. Yeah. I would have got an old couch cushion and just laid them on the fucking floor and then put a ratchet strap over them. You know, sleepy. That's. So this year at Mid Ohio, when we loaded in, I was like the ultimate goal for us. So me and Jake 2.0, we loaded, we loaded the trailers. Cromkey's trailer, there was not one molecule of daylight in that trailer. I saw. We used it all. Yeah. And uh, just like good Indians, we used all the buffalo, and we were running cardboard between the bikes because a lot of the bikes we're putting in there are not prom queens. Right. In fact, some of them. This is their last trip into the Brown. wild abandoned, right? <laughs> we salute you. <laughs> you know, like if you fail 12th grade five times, right. you don't get to go to prom. You're not coming back here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and so we did, you know, I'm not one to put a bike against another bike. But sometimes if you've got a couple of layers of cardboard, you can put a bike against, mm-hmm. against another bike. Get four or five bikes next to each other. It's a couple of tie-down straps. Put everything forward because... You're never going to have to experience all your bikes running to the back of the truck because your acceleration is so fierce. But you are going to experience all the bikes running to the front of the trailer because your braking is so fierce or you've just hit something, right? Uh, You can actually put a lot of bikes in a trailer before you even need to resort to a second layer, you know, second tier. But uh, I looked at that prop, that setup job, and I was like, okay, well, they are using a lot of straps. Oh, my God. A lot of straps. And a lot of straps can be good. A lot of straps can be bad. Usually, though, with a lot of straps, you know, you're dividing the, the load up in a lot of different directions. It's okay. So that's fine. I don't, I don't criticize other people's work until the bike is laying sideways. And then I jump right in, and I'm like, you fucking, you fucking Muppets. Like, what did you do? Who taught you that bungee cords were an acceptable, acceptable substitute? So that's fine. Your bikes will be fine. They're durable. They're tough. I'm not worried about it. You shouldn't be. No. That shouldn't be worried. You're taking the yellow one, right? Yeah. Well, I'm taking the yellow and the red one. Oh. So uh, the red one's going to be driven by oh, Jeff, okay. Jeff Spaulding. Yeah. So Spaulding is from Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. So he's coming down from Seattle. He's got a blue one. He's got the blue one right there. But right. it doesn't make sense for him to bring the blue one down and then ride the blue one back to Cleveland right. and try to get the blue one back. No, to you're Seattle. absolutely right. Yeah. So I just said, well, you know, take that's the power move. Yeah. Yeah. So. I appreciate that. That's cool. That's cool, man. That's well, cool. So we'll see. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. So in this trip, San Diego back home, right? Right. What do you think is going to be the biggest gotcha moment? Cause San Diego to Cleveland is a long way on a one twenty five. Yeah. So, so I'm flying out on Monday <laughs> and uh, we'll get in. Uh, Baldy and I are flying out Monday and we'll get in to uh, San Diego by 2.30 or 3 o'clock. Right. And then we'll go from there. We're getting picked up. And I, uh, uh, GPS Kevin has rolled out the welcome mat for us and he lives somewhere around San Diego. He does, yeah. So we're, we're, we're staying at his joint apparently. Uh, Monday night, and then we're um, rather than planning the whole route out for ourselves, uh, we're gonna use the Cannonball Monkey route that um, GPS Kevin has put together and has run numerous times from the West Coast back to New York City. So that's gonna 
eliminate us guessing which roads to be on. And that's a 14 day route yeah. that Kevin designed. I think his, if you look up his website, I think yeah. it's nine days. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. And they're, 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 yeah. The so, Cannonball Run is a 14 day adventure across the best possible back roads of America. Excuse me. But I think what, what you're doing is, you're cutting off the Cleveland to New York, and that's going to save yeah. you three fucking days yeah. right there, four yep. days right there. Yeah. Promise you. Yeah, because there's uh, the traffic through Penn, Philly and New York. Would yeah, be two days. Oh, that is the worst last day. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the Pennsylvania Turnpike is going to cost you $1,000. So, <laughs> just Holy did, shit, you're not kidding. I dude. just did that. It's violent. <laughs> when I took no, Dan's was... trailer, I ended up having to pay because they sent him the fucking things. It was like $180 for fucking three tolls. Because it had a trailer on the bus, and you didn't pay for the Easy Pass. Yep, right. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't know that they changed the state. Like, I mean, now I would rather avoid Pennsylvania than yes. go back. To I think a lot of people, people agree with you. I think a lot of people agree with you now. <laughs> yeah, um, I just had to ship a car across that state, and my guy who normally ships for me was like, "Oh, hey, we get to talk." Yeah, I said, "Why?" He goes, "You know, I normally take good care of you because you send me a lot of business." He says, but I got to, I got to put the screws to you, man. He goes, it costs me two and a half times what it used to, to get across that state. And I'm like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's aggressive, man. It's a super fucking aggressive. Well, and not only that, but like they're treating a, a passenger car with a small trailer as a fucking tractor and trailer. Like All you get up, charged right? the same amount as a fucking yeah. semi. It's, it's real bad. Yeah. It's real bad. Yeah. I, I do. I, I do caution anyone about. Driving across Pennsylvania on the toll road. Uh, you know, Piper just looked at a school, and it's a factor, I think. I need to uh, bring that up, and that's definitely a negative that we would have to take the turnpike to get there and back. Yep. Mercyhurst? Oh, well, that's, no, it was uh, Robert Morris. Oh, really? Wow, well, boutique school. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, she's going to get money. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah, that yeah. helps a little. I mean, just yep. with her grade point average, she gets twenty seven thousand a year. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's a lot, man. That, that is a lot. That makes up for tolls. Uh, somebody who recently did the PA Turnpike in a car determined that while you're driving across the PA Turnpike, how many hours it will take. That the PA Turnpike is earning twenty seven dollars and fifty cents an hour. Jeez. <laughs> the minimum wage in Pennsylvania is not no twenty seven fifty an hour. Yeah, yet the turnpike is getting twenty seven fifty an hour. But wait, right? But, you can't even pay at a toll booth right. anymore. No, nope. nope. No, nope. they'll just take a picture of your license plate right. and charge you extra. Extra. Well, not only that, exactly but, right. but just as we found out with yep. Dan's trailer, yep. it was my car, Dan's trailer. Right. Who got the ta- the, the 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 thing? Dan the one did. they could see, the plate yep. they could see. <clears throat> By That's the way, fucking ridiculous. Mm, perfect for you. Tip from your uncle no, Phil. Well, I mean, I paid for it. Why don't you just rent a U-Haul and be like, hey, fuck you, it ain't mine. Mm. Wasn't me. An eight, an eight looks a lot like a B. Nah, you haul yeah. will go after that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. A little Sharpie action right. on the old yeah. plate there. <laughs> what what, say, what you know, about the, like the hologram license plate covers and stuff like that? I, again, an eight looks a lot like a B, right? Uh, I like those little pieces of uh, sticker that they were giving out with the distinguished <laughs> gentleman's ride. It was a little hologram. You just put it on one of your numbers and it blurs it out. Yeah. You know, you know, as not a lawyer. <laughs> It's, I'm just saying. We do man. not recommend right. any of these things. Yeah. You know what? You're you're, uh, you're going to start seeing. You know, like when the 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 car companies have a new model and they yep. don't want you to see it. Like yeah. they have the uh, the weird camouflage, camouflage. scatter camouflage, start, yeah. start yeah. scatter camouflage, German scatter car. camouflage all the over the back of the car. Are all right. wrong. Like fuck you, yeah. tools. <laughs> yeah, it's all well and good till the state police rolls up behind you. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> but right. You're really not breaking right. a law by having a Absol- camouflage car. You are car. absolutely yes, you are. Well, breaking the law. Well, 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 you gotta, if you, you, you if have you have technology, if you obscure your license plate, you are breaking the law, and they will drag you out of your car and beat you. But if you're dumb enough not to make a fucking electronic thing that. And change the plate and you just that. leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> so since you so brought sleep, so sleepy has this new plan, he's gonna drive across Pennsylvania with a fuck you plate. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, you know, hold on. Camouflage car. Since you brought that up, and I feel like we <laughs> owe it to our podcast listeners to provide a certain level of hooligan ism. Yeah, that's Let's the term. That. Hooliganism. We're going to go with that. That sounds good. I, I like the sound of that one. Uh, what if you could obscure your license plate? In such a fashion that nobody would ever arrest you for it because they wouldn't want to even attempt to arrest you for it 
because it's just too clever. How about an electromagnetic leaf? I love it. A leaf that is just strategically over two of the letters on your license plate. A leaf that is on the back of your vehicle until the cop pulls you over. And when the cop pulls you over, you press a button on the remote and the electromagnet releases and the leaf falls to the ground. Uh, brilliant. You weren't, you didn't put that leaf there. No. Officer, the second he touches it, you press the button and the leaf falls off. Well, so you just evaded you. 97 traffic cameras, but make sure to pick up the leaf because they're expensive. Right. It will stick no matter what. You can remove the leaf by pressing the red button on the remote. I promise you the second I saw this, I was so impressed. It's natural state of affairs is being stuck to the license plate. It's it's default position is to be magnetically stuck to the license plate. It is only when you engage the red button that the leaf will, in fact, fall off of the license and plate. And it looks just like a key fob for your thing, so it's not Of course even, it yeah. does. Nobody would ever say anything about I mean, that. I mean, they've had a, they've had a yep. huge... I'm just reporting around this. They've, they've had a huge problem with ghost plates in New York for this kind of bullshit. Yeah, a lot of Iowa people are finding out that their cars are getting tickets in New York exactly. City. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. on the one hand, I'm right. like, oh, that's kind of ingenious, because yeah. I hate... Anything that beats a Gatso camera... In like, my mind, is a work like of, the easiest yeah. way to solve this problem is, go to, the, is go to the Red Flex, uh, uh, Red Flex building in Arizona, wherever the fuck it is, mm -hmm. and just burn it to the goddamn ground. But <laughs> barring that, I recently purchased a uh, BMW key fob that is actually a vape pen. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> it's legal now, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but not to drive. So you know, oh, <laughs> it's okay, right. it just my key. I'm just uh, sucking on my key. That's weird. <laughs> usually, usually people the vapor are uh, super owners. That's true. Yeah, I oh, love the idea of the electromagnetic two. magnetic <laughs> no, leaf license plate oh. cover. I yeah. got rid of it after two weeks after it blew up. The speed, the copy for this is great. We've all been in a situation where we need to get somewhere fast, but can't because of speeding cameras. Leafy Magnet will cover a part of your license plate, so you'll never get a speeding ticket again in your life. Leafy Magnet is powered by our magnetic technology that is firm enough to keep that leaf stuck to any license plate, no matter the conditions or speed. It will stick no matter what. You can remove the leaf by pressing the red button on the remote. I fucking love it. Bring it on. So is it? So it's not a unit in the plate that's magnetic. It's the leaf itself. Uh, I believe that you either have a, uh, a, there's something probably behind the plate. That's what I'm hoping because then you could just like, you could just put any piece of metal in any fake leaf and just yeah. stick it there. Yeah. Oh, you get multiple leaves, I guess. Oh, okay. You know, you get a whack of leaves. Well, that's Le good. Leaves. Leaves. Like, you know, whack of leaves. So it'll never <laughs> leave you stranded. Unless, unless it's the maple leaves, in which case those are always leaves. Yeah, I learned that. Taranto. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. idea could go, you could have a donut on the back of it just to fuck with the cops. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then when they beat behind you, you drop it. You get five stop. leaves. That's Graham Beardo has got the donut. Yeah, I love he that. Does. You he get does. five Aaron leaves does. so you can cover the whole plate. <laughs> <laughs> or five, five uh, pullovers. <laughs> you can cover the whole plate. How funny is it? The cop pulls you over and as he's walking up to your car, you press the button and five leaves fall off your license plate. You, you got to have one for each. Season. So there is a hockey puck. You have to have seasons though. Yeah. You have to have like a green one for like midsummer. Right. But like right. this time of year, you might want to get like a, an autumn colored. One. Yeah. yeah. Get a slightly also, brown probably one. make sure that that species is in your area. <laughs> oh, not a bad idea. You have like a Can you pick different? <laughs> yeah, a Guatemalan you, banana leaf. On the you'd have a big pot leaf on there. Well, probably, yeah. Ah, that ah. might just be on my carb naturally. <laughs> it's yeah. harvest season, man. And the point is, you know, here in here in our country, for people who listen abroad, uh, we do still have police officers that will engage. I got engaged today by uh, a cop with a laser device. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. And I was, uh, fortunately, I was driving a Honda Z660, so there's no chance of me breaking any speed limits anywhere. You know, I'm driving a Honda Z. I'm not going fast. Mm. But I did happen upon him, and he was parked parallel to the road in a private property parking lot holding a handheld laser gun, which, by the way, they're not optically safe, guys. Just something for you. Those are not optically safe lasers. They're supposed to be aiming them at your license plate, but have you ever tried to hold a target on a moving object? They're shooting a non-optically safe laser at your face. Pretty much. And your, and your windshield won't stop it. No. Little tip from your lucky Phil. 
in case you ever get one of those tickets. Uh, but I have another thing, too, is when they're shooting a laser beam at you, they are looking at your face because part of the job of being a police officer is you need to identify the offender. Right. So they're using that six power zoom on the laser gun, the, the, the scope, to make sure they're seeing your face. You guys want a tip to keep you from getting pulled over by Bal- an officer with a laser cannon? Balaclava? No. Better. It's the very end of your left index finger. Stick it up your fucking nose and dig around. When you go past the state trooper who's in the comedian and he's shooting a laser beam at you and looking at your six to 10 power scope, he's going to make a visual ID on your face hole. He's going to scan your plate. He's going to hit you with the laser. It's going to say you're going 76 miles an hour or whatever speed you'd think would be enough to get pulled over. If you know there's no chance that you have in hell of getting down to a safe speed, now he's got you. What you do is you just dig your finger up your nose and just mine for gold. Because nobody wants to have the driver's license handed to them by you nasty fucker. (laughs) We have all been through COVID. We all are a little germaphobic. Cops especially. During COVID, you could go 130 miles an hour in Cleveland and not get pulled over. We all did for about two years. If you have your finger up your nose when you go past a cop and you're just digging away, minding your own business, he will not pull out. And nor should you. Have that elbow high, be digging up in there because he knows when he pulls you over, you're going to hand him your license with that finger. And he's going to take your license and he doesn't want to. Because it's got boogers all over it. And from the time we were four years old, we've been averse to boogers. And cooties, too. So if you put cooties on there, that's extra special. But I promise you, I have done this in the past two weeks. When you see the cop, go straight for your nose. Go straight for your nose and just go for it. And then just reduce your speed slightly as you're going past. So he proved his point. He made you slow down. You're not, you're, not, you're not flipping them off as you go by accelerating or maintaining the illegal speed. But the point is he doesn't want to engage with you at all. Not even a little bit. It's pretty solid. It works. I had, uh, me and Mark had a, uh, an, uh, a run-in with the, the police uh, yeah. this weekend. It was kind of funny because... I was wondering when that was going to happen. Well, this was actually, it's completely hilarious. So... We were like literally felony speeding five minutes before this out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. And then, but you know, when we go to towns or like if we're on a straight section of road, we just do the speed limit. Like right. we just, cause like that's boring. Like we're yeah. gonna, I don't want to, you know, whatever. Yeah. So like we had just, just done this part of 250 and we're going to go into West Virginia now. And so we cross over to the board. We're, now we're in West Virginia and we're going, it's 250 becomes this boring ass highway for a while. And then when you get down through wheeling, then it becomes 250 again and right. it's fun as shit. Yeah. So we were on the highway part and like, I'm talking like, like right, left hand on the tank, right hand, just kind of holding it yeah. like this, do, 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 burr, you know, 57 miles an hour right. or whatever. And all of a sudden I see this cop car with lights on behind yeah. us. And I'm right. like, what the fuck? I'm like, well, obviously I'm just, he's coming for somebody. I'm just going to move over. Right. So I move over a lane and he pulls right behind me. Oh yeah, like, he does. What the fuck? Yeah. So we pull over and for some reason, Mark pulls over, but you know, he probably didn't have to cause I was already pulled over. Right. Yeah. So I was running the camera. So I have all this on camera. So the cop comes up and he's like, I'm glad you guys pulled over. I thought you were going to run. We're like, and I mean, t- you know, we got our helmets. We take them off. And then can, now he sees that we're I'm an old man. I don't run. 50 fucking year old guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, so he's like, blah, blah, blah. And I go, hey, I, maybe you should have a gray beard on the outside of your helmet. That's right. Yeah, right? So <laughs> I was kind of like, I, I go officer, not to be funny, but I'm like, what did we do? Right. And yeah. he, he goes, you were passing car speed and all this. I'm like, we were, I got my hand was like on the gas tank. We were doing 58. He goes, exactly. And I'm like, excuse me. It was a 55 mile an hour road. Okay. And I'm like, what right. the fuck? Right. He said, this is a high traffic area. So a few weeks ago, we instituted this area is 45 now from that area to here. Mm. And I said, excuse me. And, and so he tells us that you can if you look, the, the, the thing that has the 150 signs where it's like no littering, uh, right. something, okay. something park, okay. food coming up, whatever. Emergency 45 was in that mix oh. of all the stuff. 
But it was only for literally a half a mile. We yeah. use the term selective enforcement zone for that. Yeah, that yeah. would pretty much be it. So like yeah. after talking to him for a minute, he was like, well, I mean, you know, it's for your safety. And as long as you guys understand that it's here now, since you're from Ohio. Even though this is a state route and it's federally I'm, mandated right. 50 miles an hour. I, I believe the we've done a temporary yeah. speed restriction. Right. But right. here's the best part. So after he sees our insurance and all right. this. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say after he after he's run you through the system. Well, that's when he comes back yeah. and he goes, he goes, so so guys, he goes, between the two of you, you have 125 violations like in the past. And I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I go, <laughs> I go, <laughs> I go, but that was like 20 years ago. He goes, well, yeah, there's there none. They there's not a away. lot now. He goes, but he goes, yeah, we can we can see them all. They, when dispatch calls back, <laughs> yeah. dispatch doesn't say you know, it's a, it's a line for a line, right? Right. So he's looking at his screen. It used to be, we actually got to talk to pretty girls. Right. Right. So it used to be, we'd actually talk to dispatchers and that would made the job a lot more fun, but now it's all coming through a laptop. Right. right? It used to be the pretty girl in, in the station would call you back and she'd go for, um, he's got a, He's active. He's he's got a valid license with seventy eight lines. <laughs> yeah, and you'd be like seventy eight lines. Yeah, my sweet Jesus, <laughs> right? Or they she'd say he's got you know three lines last from five years ago. Right, right, right. And so you kind of have an idea who you're working with. Now you punch it into Chris, and you get your look at your screen, and brrr, and it just comes up, and it's like multiple pages, yeah. right? Well, just multiple pages. He pointed that out, but then here's the funny part. Yeah. So after he verifies our insurance and tells us to be safe and all this stuff right. and commends us on wearing our, our safety gear, oh, yeah. which was, you know, excellent. No, uh, that's probable cause. Yeah, right. Knee pucks and sliders <laughs> <laughs> out of the racetrack yeah, right. is probable cause. Okay, but, so, yeah. but here's the best part. So afterwards he goes, considering your record, yeah. you're probably looking to have fun. So, all right, continue on 250. And when you get out there, you're going to have a thing open as hell. No cops telling right. you right now. Right, right. I'm telling you right now. For seven and all this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, thank you. And uh, <laughs> officer, officer Muldowney reminding you, you are on camera. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, and then right. we let them know that we know Tom. Oh, okay. and he's obviously famous from West Virginia. <laughs> so at that point, they were like, oh, Pennington? Oh, we haven't seen well, him for the a while. Last time I got stopped, the guy walked up to me because I was, you know, testing a bike. Mm -hmm. And I was shooting a video while I was testing the bike. <laughs> I was shooting a video while I was testing the bike. Yeah. And the guy, the, this trooper walks up and he sees the camera on the side of my helmet because it, it's an all in one, right? It's all the stuff. And so I get the Senna 10 C Pro on and he, he he goes, is that on? I was like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Can you turn it off? Yes. <laughs> Will you? No. <laughs> right. And he's like, I'd rather if you did. Yeah. And I was like. I don't know how. It's what's their worth to you? Yeah, let's right? negotiate. I was like, <laughs> what's their worth to you? Right. And I'm like, I don't think any of us should be doing anything here that we're not totally okay with being on camera. Right. And he goes, I got you at 126. I went, turn it off now. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked. I'd say, I'll do mine if you do yours. That was what, no, that's what it was. And he said, I got you at 126. And I went, it's off. And he went, okay, let's talk about this. And I was like, great. And I didn't get a ticket. Yeah. You know? And I, I mean... That video is out there. That video is out there on YouTube and you will see I shut the fucking camera off. Yeah, right. I mean, as soon as that troop, as soon as that statey pulled me over, I shut the camera off. And because, you know, that's fine. He was willing to be cool. I was willing to be cool. That's great. I just, I want to know the legality. I didn't actually this. shut the camera off. I yeah. left it on. I just <laughs> edited it out later because I was sure. like, well, I'm not sure which way this goes. But if wanna... he's like, oh, the camera's off and he hit me with a big stick that hurt, I want to make sure we had that on tape. Oh, sure. Yeah. But like, what is the legality of having these like, like, like all of a sudden it's 45 zones like that are just made up on this. Like. I can help you with that. Would you like to know? Yeah. All right. You've here in Avon Lake in our, in our town, we have U S route six route six is the grand army, of the Republic highway. And it runs right down through Avon Lake and Bay village and Rocky river and all the wealthy areas. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes. And, uh, as it does, there are a couple of points where it goes through where there were businesses and stuff that were along Route 6, right? And that area, because it is a state route, 
by definition, a state route is 35 miles per hour, by definition. Therefore, when you have a village or a community or a shire that wants to reduce that speed to 25 so they can increase income over that particular stretch of road, as people are suddenly finding themselves in a 25 zone, and they are not really aware that they're in a 25 zone, right. you write a lot more tickets, you generate a lot more income, and you buy nicer police cars. Like even my Google thing, because yeah. like I always have my it says it's on, the speed. Yeah, it said it was fifty five. I understand. Yeah. yeah, I totally understand. It wasn't even red. Like you know when right. you're going fast, it turns red to the right of it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. even red. No, because this was, as I said before, a selective enforcement zone. Right. They were going for some traffic calming. Yeah. Okay. Now what happens though is they violated their own state law when they did that because that road, due to the nature of that road, if it was a divided two lane highway or you know two lanes each way two lanes west two yeah, lanes east exactly it. then it's going to be 50 or 55 miles per hour as mandated by the state of west virginia for that type of a road right the second when the local mayor barber dog watcher said we want this to be 35 mph so we can write some tickets in here or we've had seven fatalities and we don't want that to happen anymore whatever the reason and he said it's 35 he didn't go to the trouble of convincing the state that they should change the state mandated speed for four lane roads Mm -hmm. to be 35. He just went for it. So this is that thing. And usually it is like you said, a little sign or barely there or whatever. Yeah. So we had one of these where I'm from, right. You know, a mile West of my house and they had dropped it from 35 to 25 for the business district. I laugh because everything in that district failed. Mm. Right. So it's the lack of business district. If it's anything, <laughs> it's the we need more business district. And they figured out a way to get more business. And that was not through taxes, but through tickets, tickets, giving you the business that they gave us hey. the business. Is that and, by the power plant? Yep. It's exactly by the power plant. You're yep. exactly right. And so it's right there. And that like 200 meters. Right. It's that spot. And so eventually they gave a lawyer a ticket and he was like, this tyranny shall not stand. And he did a class action. And so he did a class action and got together with all the people, public record, who got tickets in that area and said, hey, 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 that ticket you paid for, you know, 175 freedom units or whatever you paid, it was unlawful. Would you sign this document that says we'd like to get that money back for you and those points off your license and your insurance? Oh, wow. Everyone said yes. Imagine that. And the city finally went, okay. (laughs) Right. So now the city decided to super duper cheat. So the city now has sawhorses up and the sawhorse says 25. And you're like, oh, sawhorse, 25. I've got to go 25. It actually says speed calming initiative in place, 25 miles per hour. And then in very small print, the 25 is very big, but in very small print, it says on the side street, not the street you're on, ah. not the street you're going to be on until you go past CEI power plant 500 meters later, quarter mile later. No, it's for a fucking side street. They're telling you that the speed limit on a side street that you haven't come to yet is 25, mm. even though the road you're on is a state mandated 35 mile an hour road. Now, are they pulling you over there for going 25? No, they're not anymore. They're not pulling you over for going 25. They're pulling you over for questionable window tint. Yeah. Right. I was re- yeah. so funny enough, right in that area, when I worked for the, um, the greenhouse, we, 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 we rented a yeah. studio that was a photo studio. This woman just went in and whatever, paid $300 right. a month for this stupid spot over a thing, spray painted the whole thing white, and then had shit in the room in a box. So she got $600 a day. To, for her four hundred dollar a month room, that was painted white because it had big windows, so that you could go and like set your models up and do photography or videography or the flowers, whatever. So, but when we were there, I had to stop shooting several times yeah. because of the fire or the uh, uh, the police, police activity. Yeah, 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 right outside. Yeah, on my street. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. And I know the building; it was all whited out. Yeah, yeah. it's like you can drive on. Like, we, you can drive onto the roof. Yeah, and yeah. it's very sketchy. Yeah, it's parking deck is. And it was built in like 1946 or, yeah. and made out of concrete. That's where my barber is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So that same road going through Rocky yep. River, yep. as you get down toward Kensington School, yep. 
they drop it down to 25 miles an hour, mm -hmm. but they don't. So the theory is, well, you're going through a school zone, mm -hmm. but it's not like the school lights are flashing from eight in the morning until three in the afternoon. That's 25 all day long, every day. Mm -hmm. So that, that is kind of interesting. That, yeah. That hasn't been challenged. Well, just got to get the right guy. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get the right guy. And that's one of those things. And you guys just fell victim to it uh, because they decided they wanted to, well, to generate more income in that area. Sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Again, when we would leave the racetrack, my buddy was always like stripping off his gear. I was like, you, you are into where you're, you're totally aware that you are now taking off your invincibility suit. Mm -hmm. So we can leave the racetrack on motorcycles that are just slightly different than the motorcycles we've been riding around on all day, going as fast as we possibly can with license plates and headlights and shit to go to the bar and have pizza and drinks and beer and do whatever we're going to do. And then go back to the campsite or back to the racetrack and sleep for the next night. Cause this is what motorcycle racers do at the end of fr you know, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Right. Uh, and he goes, yeah, he goes, because man, you take leathers. If you go out of this racetrack wearing leathers, on a fucking moped, they're going to pull you over because like the leathers are the probable cause yeah. because the whole idea is why on God's green earth would you need to be wearing one piece Kushitani leathers with knee sliders and gloves and all that crap. If you fall off a bike, you if fall you're off going a the speed limit, well, I mean, right? I mean, yeah, right. That's I mean, but the <laughs> cops brains don't work like our brains work. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot about the best thing. So there's this one gas station down by Middleford or middle, whatever it is. Like, yeah. it's like these, it's like right in the middle of all these roads. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the Harley people like these other roads, like, like two fifteen or whatever. It's, it's more, it's bigger, sweepier, big sweepers, and big just, sweepers, you know, so they yeah. can do their 30 right. miles an hour and, yeah. and trains of 700 and, you know, do whatever they're doing. I got my pipes down. So we, we hit this gas station, you know, I, I, cause my bike likes to drink gas. So it's a lot of gas stations and uh, we're sitting there Mark went and did something and I'm, I'm kind of sitting there and they have a, a corral where you can kind of push your bike off. Mm -hmm. So you're not in the way. Mm -hmm. And it's me, my Aprilia and 700 Harleys. Yeah. Right. And all the dudes are in their Sunday best. They're all dot proved headbands, all the cuts, all the jeans, boots, every, every, every cliche. It was a veritable pirate convention. <laughs> yeah. So this dude comes up and I'm standing there. I got, you know, my full, the full leathers, boots, the whole, like right. everything, my gauntlet gloves. Cause yeah. I ain't fucking around, you no. know, but I'm also, I'm not trying to be cool. I'm just standing by my bike waiting for Mark. Right. right. He comes up, he goes. He goes, well, that's pretty fancy, uh, fancy clothes you got there. And I was like, well, they work. If you go down, uh, you know, right. whatever. Yeah. Like, it's not like a costume like yours. <gasps> and the dude walked away, and I was like, did I just say that with 700 fucking Harley standing next to it? You have, you have leather everywhere except yeah. your impact zones. Yeah, well, I was going to say, the Tourette's, my fucking stupidity right. Tourette's got me. And he right. kind of said, what? And I said, well, I mean, like, you know, like, I, 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 if... I'm uh, not uh, wearing uh, this uh, to uh, look uh, good. Uh, right. I know I look dumb, yes. but if I fall off the bike, this works. Your belly has three layers of leather. Yeah. Your elbows have none. Yeah. 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 For him. Right. Yeah. 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 Your face and head have none. Well, you had a dot approved headband. There you go. So yeah, that right. was it. Yeah. God bless. And then his dude, I, and I swear to God, I, I don't understand how these, listen, we've all ridden bikes no. you know, without gear. Right. Right. But mm. like, this is like their normal thing. Right. And so this dude's getting on his bike and his chick's getting on his bike. She's wearing a tube top, fucking like shorts, yep, right. whatever. Yep. And I'm like, okay, besides falling off the bike, right? right? It's now getting to be fall in Ohio. So the bugs that are hitting, yep, they're like this fucking, like when I got home, my bike is covered. My helmet looked like one of those memes that you see with the flies stuck to everything. Have you guys right? seen the lantern flies? When we were down at Robert Morris, they were everywhere oh, and they're, they're huge they're, yeah, but I've, that's got my them, point. I've got them in the backyard now like do they just so get long. home and they're just covered in Good shit luck. like like, like or, only I mean, freeze will kill them. like i mean okay so you take the whole fact of like all you got to do is fall over to stoplight with what you're wearing and right. you have bad days ahead yeah. of you right but then you just if they don't fall and you're just riding and you're getting hit by leaves, like big because oh, yeah. the leaves are falling and all these bugs Dude, and lantern it, it flies took, and it shit. it took like, getting hit by a june bug once on my hand 
and I have worn gloves for 25 years. Dude, how do these women, like, I just don't get it. Like, guys are dumb. Like, okay, so you got all these big uh, guys. Okay, I get it. You're yeah, dumb. They're on the back of a Harley FLART glide. They are not the smartest girls <sighs> and, on the, and in they the fucking are, high school. And ultimately, I have to admit that in that community, there's a hell of a lot of joinerism. Yeah. So you're like, okay, well, this is the uniform. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People that we know, I, I used to have a good friend I used to ride well, with. Where do you get has, bedazzled jeans in 24? Because there was a lot of bedazzled oh, yeah. jeans. Thrift store. Yeah. Okay. Affliction, no, affliction no. runs deep in the thrift store. I was going to say, TJ uh, Maxx is always an option. Yeah, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, okay, they got that okay. stuff. But I'm going to say, fingerless gloves, oh, yeah. 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 assless chaps, sleeveless vests. Chaps are um, by their the very expanders. nature assless. Vest expanders. Four layers of vest oh, expanders. Yeah. So every, every garment you're wearing has to be less than it started out with. Is there a hot right. leathers up here? <laughs> <laughs> so there is a thing, and it's part of that. It's part of the church, right? Yeah. It's part of the school. It's yeah. part of the deal. I, how can a guy who's so worried about his safety that he has not one, but two guns and a get back whip mm-hmm. doesn't have sleeves on his jacket. Right. Yep. Right. You're, you're putting the emphasis on the safety in the wrong application. Right. You know, you've got 36 rounds of nine millimeter on you, but you don't have elbows. Right. And I can promise you, I've hit my elbows way more than you've had to shoot your way out of a bad situation. Oh, yeah. So well, you are preparing for an inevitability. Let, let's be honest. Piggly Wiggly, more likely, Piggly Wiggly ain't going to be able to reach that anyway with the arms on here. <laughs> Here's this I, not going to be. I did have one other conversation <laughs> that was pretty fun. So this yeah. dude had a 2023 like bagger looking thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, white. It was a really nice bike. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Super, yeah. Al- super ultra stupid glide. Yeah. Well, whatever. Mm-hmm. I would have, I would have loved to ride it. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. So, I would. So we're talking to him and he comes back and we're going back and forth and he's like, oh man, I just did so much work to it. I put the Screaming Eagle 117 kit in it, whatever, whatever the fuck it <laughs> yeah. is. And oh, all yeah. Stuff. yeah. And he's going through all this thing. So he's like, just dynoed it. Came out 161 horsepower. The, the Rockford Fosgate. And, and he's like, he's like, what do you think about that? I'm like, that's cool. I'm like, I, I plugged in this electric module and then they sent me a tune and that has 200 horsepower. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. And he was like, say what? I'm like, no, I'm serious. It's yeah, dude. 200 horsepower. Dude, this is what a real motorcycle looks like. <laughs> Uh, it was really fun because he spent like 30 grand on that motor oh, yeah. to get 160 horsepower yeah, out of yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it was a beautiful, I'm not dogging the bike at they all. They look absolutely amazing. And so does a Winnebago. Hey, I mean, dude, they have their place. I mean, like, you're it, right in a parking lot in, in front of a Hooters. No, man, I would have enjoyed riding that bike. Just not with the gear on, like not yeah, with the right. costume. Yeah, what? yeah. It, it's it's just it's just one of those things. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they have a have an appeal to certain people and I'm not one of them. Yeah. It, it, and that's fine. I, I everybody's have everybody's got a kink. I will shame kink shame Harley's though. Yeah. That's, the Milwaukee that's... eight, the 2020 Milwaukee eight. Uh, that's a very nice boat. The 117. It's 117 cubic inches. That's I'm like going what, to tell you. 2,100 It's a CCs lot of CCs. Or it's a lot of CCs. Yeah. My, my, my Honda Elements 2.4. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of CCs. <laughs> and, that bike, we have a lot of people coming to the shop that tell me about their 88 Dyna, whatever, that had 176 horsepower or whatever. And I'm just going to say this for the podcast listeners at home. That the Milwaukee 8 117 motor is a pretty goddamn great motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Pretty great. And it has 93.8 horsepower. And it has 108 pounds feet of torque. It is 117 goddamn cubic inches, okay? When somebody comes up to me and says, yeah, man, I did this kit on my Harley. My 117 kit's got 168 horsepower. I'm like, I know a few guys that tune Harleys, and I know that those numbers are not what Harley was meant for. I just released a a post today about Octane. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have seen it. I'm going to make sure the world sees it. Cause I'm getting really sick of people and their octane problems because <laughs> I work at a shop and octane's a bit of a bitch. So I wrote this whole thing about octane and it's a decent three, three minute read, but it's about octane and it's everything you should know about octane per Unky Phil, mm-hmm. right? It's fairly well researched and insightful information with 30 years in the industry. The next one I'm going to write is how torque works and how horsepower works. Because they are mathematic fucking principles, people. They're not fairy dust numbers that come out of your asshole when you buy a cylinder kit. 
Uh, I don't <laughs> care if the guy that made your cylinder kit and sold it to you said this is a 200 horsepower kit. He may have done that one time with one bike that he did with that kit. It doesn't mean that your bike now has 200 horsepower. Or it, it means doesn't. that his one that made 200 horsepower lasted to the end of the dyno. Seven run. seconds. Yeah. Right. Uh, what I assure you is the kit that you bought and somebody else installed on your 1998 Mooglide did not give you 196 Herspers. No. It did not. And I know that you say that to yourself to make yourself feel better, but it didn't. And I'm going to also tell you a sad fact about torque and horsepower. If you tell me the horsepower number of your motorcycle, and I suspect that you may be 100% full of shit, <laughs> I'm going to ask you about the torque number. And then I'm going to ask you a question about at how many RPM. Right. Because if you've done a tour, if you've done a run, even at Quaker Steak and Lube's Dixie Dino for 50 bucks, take a run until you blow your motor up. You will know something about torque and horsepower. But if you don't know the answer, I'm going to know you're 100% full of shit. Right. Because I don't care what your torque number is. I'm, I'm and I don't care what your horsepower number is, but I know they're the same at fucking 5,252 RPMs because that is the fucking formula that was invented oh, yeah. to discern horsepower from torque and torque from horsepower. It is just math, my friends. That's all it is. You get one number from the other. It is like three points on a map. You give me th triangulation. You give me two points, I'll show you the third. Dude, and you get around people right? that know that. Like I was at... That yep. guy from the SEMA garage that yep. wrote the books on tuning. Mm -hmm. Like he is the guy that wrote four books now on fucking tuning and like everything to do with that. When you see the knowledge that these dudes have, he was going through 20 to 30 different tables in the dyno room and he'd be flipping through these tables like nothing. Yep. And so they were trying different injectors with this, this LS and he could tell that this other injector to get from zero to open to full flow took it like... 250 thousandth of a second but the other injectors took 150 thousandth of a second to get to full flow so he had to tell the motor and the ecu that difference so that it could be zeroed out so that it knew to measure the flow after the thing was fully open like that's how detailed real to it's okay. so like i'm sure barney at fucking like harley dogs and us are probably not that <laughs> detailed you know and like the tuning things and stuff. here's what i can tell you the universal standard for all of this 100% the industry standard for all of this is called DinoJet. Mm -hmm. And everything <laughs> that isn't DinoJet is based on DinoJet. If you have something that's not a DinoJet, it's based on DinoJet. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Even if you've got an old Eddie brake, if you've got an old Dino, if you've got some garbage from the 50s or 60s, it's okay. If you have an old EPA unit that used to test the fucking cars on the rollers and you got it cheap on gov deals, it's still the same thing. But I'm going to promise you, if I'm looking at your chart, right, and you're running a clean chart, it's going to tell me these numbers and I'm going to know what they are. And it's very, very simple. It's a mathematical principle. Mm -hmm. When somebody says, oh, yeah, man, I made 108 torques and i made 93 horsepower cool yeah i i got that i totally got that i can tell you where the numbers crossed we know the way it works super easy not even a challenge when somebody tells me i've got 190 horsepower and 100 and fucking you know 210 torque well i want to know how many rpm you were turning when that happened right that makes because sense. You may be in excess of the mechanical cap capacity of that motorcycle. So that's what we call theoretical torque and theoretical horsepower. Right. And theoretical horsepower is where Santa, Cor Santa Claus, the unicorn, and the Easter bunny all meet in the intersection. <laughs> right. It just doesn't work, man. And I've been hearing this shit from people for fucking 30 years of my life where guys come in and they have fingernails 
that are clean. Well, that's the thing. Most of these guys, exactly like you said, they're paying people to build their motors. And they're, so I'm yeah. sure they're, you know, if they're you're writing giving, checks. Well, that's well, what I'm saying. You're giving a guy 10 grand hey, to make your motor faster and back. I bet she comes back with some exaggerated numbers. Hey, hey Sleepy. Yeah. How much does assholes pay to fuck up their Porsche? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, the, yeah. that's, that's the the your thing. answer. Yeah. Dude, that, that is insane. Did you yeah. see that thing I posted today? That RWB guy. He's like, I mean, listen, I don't, I'm not blaming him. If he can take rich guys' money and sucker them to have them do all that stuff, good for him. I just think it's funny that you have photographic evidence of how you ripped somebody off and get likes for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, that's my well, thing is when, like, you're, when you're filming your work and you're getting, you know, 800,000 views on YouTube. And meanwhile, in those views, I am watching you commit a felony. Right. Like, like dude, yeah. the, the body kits, whatever. I mean, they, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're a certain person's taste. And they, they, right. the kits seem decently yeah. made, whatever. Right. The dude's taking a hacksaw to the fucking metal part of the Porsche. They're not sealing it. They're Structural. not weather stripping Structural. it. Structural part of the car. Yeah. Just a hacks. part of the car that actually gives it its rigidity. Yeah. And then replacing it with glue stick. Well, that that was the other thing. When he laid down when he laid down your twelve thousand dollar body kit, right? That's that's glued before on, installation. Glue on chicken wire. With that caulk. was the best. With, yeah, chicken wire. <laughs> With with hot glue, yeah. and then he painted the chicken wire yeah. inside the thing so it didn't get on the carpeting of where he was working, yeah. and then he beat it with a hammer to make it fit. The and Russians used it. to have structural newspaper <laughs> in their bondo, yeah. right? Structural newspaper and layered in with the bondo. And you're like, oh, it's very good. It's good. It lasts many years. It's fine. That's fine in a seventy three dollar Trabant, right? But it's not so bueno. In a Porsche. No. What, by the definition of the car, we're thinking we're probably going to be driving this in a spirited fashion. And and so, like, it's a wide body kit. Yeah. And so I was like, <laughs> wow, I wonder how he's going to support the back of the wide body right. kit. Then he pulls out a little aluminum tube and bangs the ends of it, bends it, and just, just power screws it into the side Literally, of the car. This is self tappers. Self tappers. This is this is kind of so metal screws. Yeah. This is kind of how I build rat rod scooters for so, years. So. so I was looking, I'm like, okay, how much does this dude make? Right? I've seen Pinewood Derby cars put together better than that. Yes. Yeah. So so you know, he puts this thing on, then yeah. he caulks it, yeah. and then like Oh, he caulks the hell out of it. Yeah, he caulked the hell out of it. Hey Dan, since we're talking about caulk, hand me your caulk. Oh wait, hold on. I'm gonna have a little more caulk so, too. I looked I looked it up. And okay, so say you have a mint nineteen ninety, you know, nine eleven tur- oh, turbo. Right. So now because you know the world, you probably paid ninety thousand dollars for that, right? For a nice one. He charges almost a hundred grand to do his debauchery to your car. Well, you have to put him up. You have to put him up in a hotel. He wants a leather chair in the room, and he has to be able to smoke. And then he just brings like five little tools and does everything <laughs> right there. Yep, yeah. it's uh, insane. Yeah. Dude. He has to have only green M and M's in the bucket. Yeah, <laughs> not not for nothing, but it's there's good. a whole lot. There's a whole lot of people out there that have a whole lot of followers. Um, our friend uh, Kevin Moore. Yeah. Uh, did a car um, on one of these car builder shows, mm. right? And it was one of those, you know, uh, what are they, fast and cash and... Assholes and elbows? Whatever. <laughs> Grease monkey, whatever the fuck it was. Right. But somebody came in and they were like, we're going to take your daughter's Ford Maverick and we're going to turn it into a Shelby Maverick, you know? And now uh, the problem is, you know, Kevin and Kevin's old, they know cars. He's never, I think he said he's never owned a car newer than 1965. That's true. In his whole entire Oh, his life. winter car is a goddamn Econoline. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, Mid Ford. Now, they do the build on this car, and Kevin has to, Kevin's there. It's mm-hmm. his daughter's car. And Kevin's there, and they bring in this group of fuck knuckles um, and, a, you know, a head fuck knuckle, and they're going to run the job. And they're all trying to do this, you know, we understand. My friends, this is TV. And if you think reality TV is, it's not, so shut up. Um, if you're watching any reality TV, I feel bad for you because you're just in, in the middle of a fucking cyclone of fucking self. It's just ridiculous. So when they were done, I went over there because we we're having the rap party and the whole deal. And the car's sitting there. And you know when they say a car's a good 20-footer? We know what that means. That means from 20 feet, looks pretty good. Mm. That's all right. You know, that's all right. It's a well, good 20 footer. It's usually 20, 20 or 50, 50. 
That's yeah. 20 feet at 20 miles an hour, 20, or, or 50, 50 feet at 50, 50 miles, miles an hour. An hour. This one might have been a Hondo Hondo. <laughs> so y'all are aware that one of the basic concepts of Shelby is that there's a couple of stripes yeah. that go from the front of the car to the back of the hawk. They're usually pretty straight. We too. used to talk about from the snout to the tail, mm-hmm. right? Two stripes, pretty big, kind of an important part of the operation. Now, my band director, marching band director, used to say, any blind man, many blind man can see a crooked line. You know, marching, it's important. Ask the gentlemen's. So, on the front of this car, the car's stripes on the front, they were where they were supposed to be. They were generally in what we call the hood area. <laughs> and they went back, and they made it to the squirters. And then they went to the roof, and they kind of went over the roof. And then somewhere about mid-roof, shit got weird. (laughs) (laughs) And I looked at the car the first time, and I thought I may have been roofied. I thought I was getting into some of your stuff. (laughs) Because it it wasn't possible that on a car where one of the central features of the back of the car, between the taillights, is a gas cap. Yeah, right. And they tend to put the gas cap in the middle of the back of the car. It kind of spaces out the taillights quite nicely. Mm -hmm. So putting these stripes on should be a fucking fool's errand. Just go right down the tail. Right down the middle. And you just make sure the gas caps in the middle. It wasn't. (laughs) It wasn't even close. It was a fucking half an inch off if it was a day. And I'm like, is your car crooked, Kevin? Is the deck lid on wrong? What's going on? He goes, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm going to have to unpaint this entire fucking car. I'm going to have to fix it. He goes, but I want you to get up a little bit closer and I want you to take a look at those taillights. And I want you to see the way the taillights are held into the car. And I saw black drywall screws. Oh, no. Not one. All. Mm. And the more I looked at that car, the shittier it got. And this is from a national top ranked, the car, all the the TV show, the people all watched. And I'm like, Kevin, they fucked your car up. And he goes, Phil, it's going to cost me seven to $10,000 to undo what they did to customize my daughter's car. Did they put like California special taillights on it? Or was it Maverick taillight? Because the, the Shelby's use the uh, California the sequential special lights. California special the sequentials. Lights. Right, right. Did right. they put those yeah, on it? they did. Yep. And you know how they stuck them to the car? Oh, apparently with self-tapping Ooh. screws. With, no, no. Self-trap it. Self-tapping sc- screws would have been an Indian thing to oh, do. Oh, God. I mean, dot, not feather. What they did was drywall screws. Oh, God. Into the body. And it, and it's not like you can find those on any freaking tree on the street corner. No. Right into the body. The amount of devastation, the amount of carnage that they did to what was just a 71 Maverick. Kind of clean. Nothing special. Yeah, no. But perfectly goddamn straight. Yeah. And it was Carol Shelby Blue. It was the right color. His daughter's name is Shelby. They painted it gray with Hmm. dark gray stripe. It was a fucking abomination. So these car shows, these people that do that, well, it's, that's what, it's for the likes. That dude that Tom yeah. got into that passed yeah. away recently, that rabbit dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, rabbit. He had whatever TV show he had, uh, something rescue, what, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Like, they show... <laughs> They showed some of the cars that they built. Like they were like, "All right, we got this car for six thousand. We're getting budget of ten thousand for the parts and stuff." And then I got a buyer lined up. He'll buy uh, it for a hundred grand, yeah. right? Uh, they started showing these cars, like because in the just like you're saying on the TV show, everything was like twenty five feet away, mm, shiny yep. in the sun and everything. So then the guy, the guy, <laughs> the guy who bought the one car was like, "Let's take a look at this fine automobile that I spent a hundred thousand dollars on." And then he started taking the pictures like down the side of the car and the orange peel was like two millimeters deep. And like the body panels, like the the door was like a half inch out from the back fender, you know, and all this stuff. And it was like, it was really (laughs) bad, man. And like, yeah, those shows. If watching somebody destroy something. Yeah. It's hard, man. It's tough. There's, there's one show and I actually watch them for work because like they do enough stuff that I try Like I, 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 I see how they time some of the builds so I can do that with some of the stuff we do at work. Okay. And it's that Texas metal show because that show, there's no drama. There's no, the storyline is like, we're building this truck from the ground up. Okay. 
uh, this guy's working on the suspension. He's like, I'm building this. Then they show him building that. It's really like I've actually learned stuff from the show. It's really cool. And they their their stuff is unfucking believably perfect. Some of it's ridiculous. Like a big lot of those West stuff, Coast but. chopper builds. A lot of those. Uh, a lot of those biker build off builds. Um, the Tuttles. That shit's unsalvageable. Did you see um, the guy bikes and beards? Bikes and beards. Yeah. He's he's he revived him because now he's has a new just like the old days, a new battle of uh you know who can build the better bike. Somehow they're pulling it back off again. Want to hear a joke? Always. I mean, we've been talking about really shitty car TV for five, ten minutes now. <laughs> Is it an Orange County chopper joke? <laughs> so a nun comes walking out of mass, and the two altar boys have their pants down and their penises in a snowbank. She says, boys, boys, what are you doing? And the one turns around to the nun and says, well, you know, Father Malcolfresh likes a couple of cold ones after Mass. <laughs> Thank you for that. You know what? You know what? Patreon's the $5 level. You're going to get that one for free. I think we're going to throw that one in. I think we got to kick, kick that one in for him. You sure it wasn't <laughs> Father Diddy? <laughs> uh, anybody else got anything else? No. Uh, no. So, it seems pretty solid. Like a solid motorcycle podcast. I don't know if we're going to leave it on that bad. Uh, we there. had one of our podcast listeners complain about um, the length of our unit. What's the length of our unit today, Sleepy? Oh, two hours and 14 minutes. That's fantastic. That's a nice yeah. toy unit was, right was there. Was he upset about the the, the brevity or the I length? think he was concerned about the length, not the girth. Mm. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 We might have been hitting bottom on him. The content of her character was too much for him. It was too much. It was more than he could handle. So that's nice. We're a little toiter. Mm-hmm. He can't, he toiter. He can't, it's yeah. fine. If you can't handle that length, you're it's okay. It's okay. Well, and you know what? Right. We maybe, you know, maybe you're not looking at the big picture. And Phil knew that he was going to be gone last weekend. Right. So yeah. we gave you a little we more did. before. We had to go in a little and deep. And then we're, we're giving you a little deep. back on the back deep. end. Yeah. We're making up it. for it, man. And by the way, since I was gone, I got a world record. Oh, yeah. Guinness Book of World's Records. Seriously? I'm in there. For My what? name. World's longest procession of hearses. Ah. Oh, you got it. Over 156 fucking hearses. Well done. What's weird is the the record prior to that was in South Africa. Oh, really? For 122 hearses. And it was like 20 some odd years ago. It was a long wow. time ago. So I saw pictures of that one. It's a lot of Mercedes, like a lot of like, you know, what was South the, African What was the hearse that blew up your skirt beside your own? I did like my hearse a lot. I gotta say, I'm I'm coming in solid on the mid '60s Cadillac hearses with the stacked headlights. Yeah, yeah. I love a nice angular caddy, yeah. Yeah, that's and I think mean. that for me, those Fleetwoods, man. Oh, you know, the two headlights stacked on top of each other for me as a that's kid the, growing that is up. The quintessential, like like early '70s New York based hard, hard boiled cop shows. Did anybody, and stuff? Did yeah. anybody have like? spectacular acrimonts that went with yeah man a lot of people did you know it's a hearse thing so there's a lot of creativity there there's a whole lot of this is dark scary etsy like all of it (laughs) they're uh uh, 200 hearses live laugh love it's like oh it is fucking straight up (laughs) yeah it is it is some it is uh, the wednesday and appreciation society um it's there were 200 hearses and over 200 vendors of creepy shit. Yep. Dude, I usually hate, not hate, but yeah, I'm just yeah. kind of over the slutty whatever yeah, costumes, yeah, 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 yeah. but the slutty Wednesday Adams. I've seen a few of those getting lined up. I'm like, my okay. whole world on Sunday. <laughs> I, gonna, yeah. I promise you that. Uh, that ain't too Wednesday bad Adams. Right Wednesday, Wednesday hit the hearse community right in the bread right. basket. Well, let me just, yeah. just clarify that live. we're talking like a, a, over 18 people playing Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, I thought yeah, that was yeah, like, yeah, just no. to make no, sure. She's like 70 by now. Yeah, right, we're not right, worried about right, that. Right, right, right. Okay. But what I have to say about the Hearst community is the Hearst community is that thing where like, it is about death. It is about transporting death. It is about the creepiest cars in the goddamn world, right? I've been going to car shows since I was a little kid. I got raised around pre-war classic cars. And that's a whole thing. Setting up your car, sitting in a lawn chair behind your car, waiting for somebody to ask you a dumb question about your car so you can feel important answering their question and then make fun of them when they leave for how ignorant they are. For anybody who doesn't know, that is the synopsis of every car show and most motorcycle shows. But now, the yeah. per- like, it'd be, so I only know because of work, like yeah. the big, like the car show, the guys that were going in the 70s that still go, and now they've taken it so the things that you were just talking yep. about, the lawn chairs yep. and things, 
now if you have the period correct lawn chairs, oh, it's tailgating to the oh, all yeah. those stupid it's pieces like, of shit then plastic it all and aluminum goes ones. together. Oh, and it like, all has to go together. The cooler has to be period correct, yes. and then the the gla- they have uh, radiation glass and stuff that they're drinking. Uranium out glass, of. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all that shit. Well, you the, need to have the uh, tire. Your attire has to be period mm-hmm, correct mm-hmm, for your yeah, car. Yeah. You know, yeah, they've made it less all fun. The, all the lead, po- <laughs> all the lead poisoning. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, but now on your hand, you're like, let's bring out the scary shit. Meanwhile, the hearse people are just getting so much fun with it they are having a blast and it is like some guys will go into the originality now people on this podcast this body is only two weeks old i'm gonna promise you (laughs) oh there were a lot of stiffs one just go for the vanity plates you know last responder like the vanity plates alone are just brilliant yeah (laughs) <laughs> Such a high level of creativity there. Our band, our buddy ADs in a band called Last Responders. I had to give him a little shout out. Yep. But here's the trick. You don't have to be a car guy to know that a 57 Chevy is an important car. Yeah. And you don't have to be a car guy to know the 59 Cadillac is an important car. Yeah. Imagine seeing 17 1959 Cadillac hearses and or ambulances or combinations, well, which they, it could they be were, a person in the morning and ambulance yeah. in the afternoon. Absolutely. To go to a place where the Ghostbusters car is common. Right. Right. Common. It's fucking rad. And it's just cool to see like, okay, I'll see your 66 Bonneville and I'll raise you a 66 Bonneville three-way hearse. <gasps> no, you didn't. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And then somebody shows up with a goddamn hearse monster truck that's seven and a half feet I off the goddamn picture. ground. Yeah, that was like, cool. It, it is a it's a pretty fun place to go, and there is not one bit of pretentiousness or stuffiness or anything. Yeah, what's that? Uh, like so like you people know, dress up. You go to Reno and you go to these things, and yeah. every single car is mint perfect. Nah, whatever. Not her. So how is this? Just all over the place. So like the pro car guys. Yeah. So there's a thing called the Professional Car Association, P- or PCS, Professional Car Society, PCS, and those guys are pretty legit. They're like, is your car original? How original is your car? Is does your car have the original wheel caps that it had in 1954? Yeah. Yeah. They want to see that shit. Does your car have the original curtains that came in the side from 1954? And they judge each other based on that. And it makes their small dicks very, very hard for a moment (laughs) to win these trophies. But in the rest of the hearse world, it's get fucking weird. Yeah. And it is absolutely get weird. And it's like, you know, it's like dead girls can't say no in the back window of the car. And you're like, wow, (laughs) wow, wow. That is a like, you know, you know. Yeah, consent right. jokes are really yeah. big. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there's uh, the other ones are like you know, um, when you when you pick up girls at the cemetery. That's the lead-in. I know, right? When, once you get past the smell, <laughs> you've got, you've got it licked. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no a, there's no romance like necromance. Necromance. That's another one. That was that was on the back window yeah. of a fucking Ford Crown Vic hearse this weekend. I saw yeah. I saw a little a little cartoon that I thought you could yeah. print out and put in your hearse. Yeah, it's this little dude, and they show him partying. Yeah. and then the next thing is like him with these other people, and then they, they show him sitting there with these two girls in bed. Oh, he's yeah. not really in bed. He's just laying there. Oh, yeah, 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 and then they yeah, yeah. Sh- they cut to a he's guy. He's having a good night. Then the guy next to him is looks like he's drunk and he's got penises. T- oh, yeah. yeah. He's having a face. good night. Then the next panel is him putting him back in the fucking. Back in the coolers. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll tell you, weird shit happens yeah. at the morgue. Yeah. Yeah. Lonely guys. All- lonely guys always work at the morgue. Oh, that's right? so gross. Oh, it's disgusting. But in this particular thing, I had seven or eight people come up that don't just talk the talk. They might not. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, I got a hearse over there. That's great. I had seven people come up to me that were legit straight up embalmers. Like they worked in that industry. Wow. So there is crossover, right? It's pretty cool. Well, I mean, it's if, fun. I mean, if you ever. OK, what was the old? You told me once upon a time the best way to find old Shriner scooters. Yes. Was to become a Shriner. Absolutely. So what's the best way to find an old hearse? Exactly. <laughs> Go to work at a funeral home. Oh, straight up. <laughs> yeah. And there are some guys that showed up these events that just deal in old hearses. So like, and I'm not talking about like old from the fifties and sixties. I'm talking about like that old 2008 model's got to go. Oh yeah. What's the thing is. And so they'll show up with like a 2008 Cadillac 
purse that's got 31,000 miles on it only smells lightly of formaldehyde. And it's ready for its next owner, whether that be a funeral home that's on a budget or some creepy dude who wants to put a you know casket full of beers in the back. Yeah. It's what it is. Um, but you try finding a 20 year old station wagon for that cheap. Exactly. <laughs> I promise you, I, sh- I had the shortest hearse there. I, well, and- I, I seriously I had I had itty bitty. I had itty bitty wiener syndrome. I showed up with a Volvo that was six feet shorter than any other hearse in the house. <laughs> but right? if, you, if you think about it for yeah. a minute, like hearses have to be maintained. Can you imagine yeah. the embarrassment yeah, of fucking like stalling on the way to a funeral? Excellent there's, maintenance. There's, <laughs> there's, there's, excellent there's maintenance. There's a reason why the Cadillac North Stars are so damn cheap. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I, I, I saw a hearse on Facebook Marketplace and it was only $3,200. Karnak says Cadillac, Cadillac North, Star. North Star. Right. It is in the hearse community, but he's like, oh, adorable. You got your first hearse and it's a caddy from the 90s. <sighs> well, I guess we'll see you on a flatbed on the way home. <laughs> right. There is that thing where like even hearse people know to avoid certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but what I have to say is the camaraderie. Everybody there, um, you know, Black Widow's Hearse Club out of Toronto, Ontario. They all came down. They all showed up. They all drove down. So was this a big, it's like to get the Guinness record, like yeah. this was like in the Hearst community, this was like a, a big hub. Oh yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. This is a, this is a deal. Even, people came from Florida. When did the buzz came, start? Like eight, nine months ago? Yeah. Like, oh, well, eight, okay. Even the local funeral home got in on this. They did actually. Yeah, see, they did. They did. And what I will promise you is this, this, this collection, this event has been going on for 25 years mm. and the event used to take place in hell, Michigan. Right. Mm-hmm. We're going to hell to look at the hearses. Yeah. Hell, Michigan. But hell, Michigan is like an intersection. It's tiny. Yeah. And so there was no more room in hell. <laughs> perfect. That's no, what that's, happened. That's we had to move to the Fowler County Fairgrounds because there were goddamn too many hearses. We shut down hell. Hell was afraid we'd take over. And we did move somewhere else. And it's fun. It's just a guy. And every year I take different people. So like. First year I went, second year I took Merritt and Oscar uh, and Renee and Oscar just was like, oh, Oscar instantly was like, I'm getting a hearse tomorrow. (laughs) This is rad. I've never seen this many goth chicks in one place. (laughs) They were all like, yeah, game on. It was amazing. And you have like places to go. Yeah, right. And yeah. and we did and then this year I took Colleen cuz Colleen never misses an opportunity to dress up for an event and this is a great opportunity to dress up for so an event. So is there I mean like there's are there Hearst rocking uh throughout the weekend? <laughs> you can tell. You can tell. Yeah, you can tell. There you can tell. It's just cuz every Hearst is that's what I'm saying. You got a whole area. Back it's a there. wagon, man. Yeah, right. I mean, call it what you want. It's a wagon with That's better a interior. Special lady to be like, yeah, this is the environment that turns me. Uh, on. Look, there's 20 or 30 ladies that show up with their own fucking cars. Yeah, no, no, I get that, but I'm saying for the the next stage, like yeah. the actual in the back. Oh no, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't call I, it a meat wagon for nothing. I like <laughs> it when somebody. When one of my friends sees me show up in a Japanese ornate hearse and it's all Shinto temple and yeah. you know, it's literally ordained a thousand like, dragons it, on it. The fucking car is religious. It's, it is a, a holy place. And my friend's like, hey, we're, we're going to fuck in there later on, man. Like, you don't know it, but we're going to get hop in your hearse later on. And me and my old lady, we're going to screw in there. And I'm like, you won't be the first, dude. Yeah. That car's 30 years old and it's been living in Japan. It was pregnant <laughs> twice. Right. <laughs> have you seen Japanese people? Have you have you ever seen the Autobots? <laughs> right. As the, do you Sabbath. think there's any chance in the world that there's a hearse in Japan that hasn't been fucked in? Right. I mean, come on, man. It, it's in like, at least three movies. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, ab- so that, that idea, the hearse thing is very funny. And what I think is great is that you know, I've done these events where I've slept in my hearse because I'm just, it's just me and a mattress back there. And it's yeah, fine. It's fine. a totally convenient place to sleep. It's fun. And then I've also done. It has soft lighting. It does have soft lighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. You got to take the, you got to take the tray out. You got to take, yeah, you gotta yeah. take, yeah. Hey, look, yeah. look, if there's yeah. any one good right. thing that has come out of, come out of that hearse you just bought. Yeah. It's the cot you brought me for the back right. of the shop. <laughs> The gurney. the gurney. Oh, the gurney. <laughs> I can sleep anytime. I now have multiple gurneys. I'm going to have to get rolling. Yeah, that's yeah, a weird time to go. 
All right, guys. Remember out there in podcast land to ride fast and take chances. Place out here, Johnny. Eject, 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 get us out of here.